previously on Kawhi Fi Quest. Fetch the bread! <laughs> that was a baguette! <laughs> Ah. Nothing like a good soak in the hot spring. Really washes away the monster hunting smell. How's your side, Coco? It's the best! They even have a penguin! So this is where you've been hiding? Hey, King Jude! What's Regal up in the castle? You're meant to be training to beat the Demon Lord! And the owner of this bathhouse says you've been here for four weeks! Well... We really wanted to watch some anime, and you see the season's about to start, we can't watch it anywhere, so we decided to soak our souls, to cheer ourselves up, and we just didn't leave. What is anime? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. Avalanche! <laughs> Tetsuo! Ganida! Onita! It's over 9,000! Nani? Configure the language logic interface for Japanese. Wi-Fi. 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 Wi-Fi Radio! Konnichiwa and welcome to a new episode of Kawaii Fi Radio, the podcast where we look into the world of anime and manga. I'm your host Kenny, and joining me as ever are my co-hosts Kyle and Coco. Hey! Hello! How's everyone doing? We are reporting live from a hot springs deep in the fantasy world. <sighs> I, well, I'm not leaving. Th- th- this is not true. Uh, yes, yes it is. I'm clo- My eyes are closed. It's where I am. You're in a happy place. Mm-hmm. We're, but, but we're in a hot springs. We are, and that's final. We're, we're not, not in a hot springs, eyes. guys. Like, it, it, you can't I bend the fourth one. wall that I, much. I reject I your reality and substitute my Look, I'm I, not leaving. It's so warm. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I can guys. feel the steam rising. My pores are open. I'm sorry, but oh, I'm, I'm so turning it off. Good. What? No. <laughs> oh. And that brings to the end the hot springs episode. You know what, Kenny? <laughs> Let's go find a hot spring somewhere. I'm for that. Well, on the note of hot springs and being in a fantasy world, what isekai anime would you like to visit? Ooh, that's a good question, that. Because, I mean, we've been playing around in an isekai world as part of Kawaii Fi Quest for the past six episodes. And so... isekai has been a staple of our anime diet for quite some time now. And this season as well will be more of it. Oh, yes. Well, I would be happy to be part of Konosuba because Ooh. there's that entire town that's devoted to hot springs, right? Yeah, but it's... Controlled by the Axis cult, who are oh, a bit culty. You completely forgot that's about okay. that. Okay, I'll just be like, no, I do believe. Just, just let yeah, me then, soak that, in my belief, but right? Then, then they'll <laughs> be, then they'll be like, here's some pamphlets. Go hand them out. I'll yeah. be like, yes, yeah, sure, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hand them out. You, you from will join the my, cult from my vantage point of the hot, in the hot spring. spring. <laughs> yeah. What about just, yourself, really? Kyle? What is a Kai? Would you like to get yourself stuck in? I know there's so many great ones out there, but I always fall back on Gate. I just, I love the idea of it's just like, you know, we're going to take modern tech and just go through there and we're going to try and fix a world that's kind of decided it's going to come and attack us completely unprepared. I feel like it's kind of a cop out, but I want to say exactly that one because Mm. uh, it feels like there is so much that could be like taken to that world from ours Mm. and such that could be brought back as well. Like, I think you were telling me that in the manga, the JSDF actually starts studying the magic and stuff like that. They have historians (laughs) looking at artifacts and scientists figuring out how magic works and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, And there was a Red Dwarf episode where they go back in time and in, and they find a guy who they think is Jesus. And oh, they yeah. teach him how to make a bag and he just makes a killing. So that's what I think about as well. Like, it's not only the comfort, just it's, it's not it's only the, the hot the spring, knowledge. but I want to be able to go there to a medieval sort of era and go, well, look at this awesome thing that you never knew you needed and I'm going to patent it so that no one else can make it. I'm going to sell it at a premium and make myself rich. Mm-hmm. Actually, now that you've said that, you've reminded me of one of my favourite isekais. I've watched a lot of it. You guys have only seen an episode, I think. It was oh. Isekai Nobu. Is this the um, Ooh, is this cafe? The, the which has, it's yeah. like a Japanese restaurant where its front door leads out into like a Germanic fantasy world where all the locals of this town just find this place so intriguing and so like wonderful. All the food from Japan is just beyond their expectations. But the back door of this restaurant leads right out into Tokyo. Oh. So I'm thinking... 
Yeah, that's the best of both worlds. Work in a Japanese restaurant, visit a fantasy world by day, oh, head awesome. into Tokyo by night. This reminds me of a manga I read, which is called, <laughs> as is typical Japanese fashion with their manga, a very long name, yes. uh, Saving 40,000 Gold for My Retirement in Another World. Um, and it's a similar principle where a girl gets the power to teleport between a fantasy world. Oh, so she's not stuck there. She's she not can... stuck. She can go oh. back and forth at will. And she discovers that the money that the gold coins sold in the fantasy world are actually worth a lot more in modern day Japan. <laughs> oh, that sounds amazing. So she starts earning money in the oh. fantasy world to sell to modern day Japan so she can retire at 25. Oh, oh that sounds oh. amazing. <laughs> oh, I need that as an anime right yeah, now. I really want that That speaks as an anime. to me as a millennial. <laughs> 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 Take my money. <laughs> I can't have avocados. I've, I've won a house. Oh, no. Yeah, see, no, 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 see, no, no. Like, That's I'm going to have happen. my avocados and I'm going to have my early retirement too. Yeah. If I could do this. If you could do this, that yeah. would be perfect. But switching gears, we An do need to talk tree. about something which came into uh, the news the past week before we get to the news because this just, this hyped us, all three of us up mm. exceptionally. And it was the new trailer for the CG version of Loop in the Third. Oh my Far goodness. out this looks oh. good. You know how it's hard to convert 2D to 3D? Mm. They have nailed it. To, they to have a nailed it. And it's, it's, I oh believe they've goodness. gone over just nailing it because you look at that, that is slicker than anything you've seen in, from Pixar. Like that is more Lupin than Lupin. Oh. Yeah. I, uh, you didn't, I didn't think there was a way for them to actually improve the formula this much and they've, <sighs> they've hit the it's, nail bang on the it's head. It's kind of like the Tintin movie. Yes. Yeah, it's yeah, a little it's bit. just so well, obviously so well storyboarded that all the mm. action sequences are perfect and mm. it was just like kept, that's the same feeling I get watching this. And you know you know what they would have done as well? They would have storyboarded this the exact same way they would have done for a normal 2D loop and mm, film. And absolutely. then they would just would have went, okay, how do we put this in a 3D environment? And that's it. And it's that's great because oh, yes. it has the look and the feel and the vibe of a Lupin series. And that makes me so happy. It, yeah, it's it really sort of, does. It looks like it's, you know, combining James Bond, Tintin, just mm. everything yeah. I want to see. <laughs> and a I'm little s- packed up and rolled into a little Fiat. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right. We do need to move on because the autumn season is here. It's mm. going to be a long stint. We apologize for the long episode, but you're going to get these every six weeks. As yes. you know by now. <laughs> yes. It's full of highly Less anticipated slugged. sequels and some new big hitters on the way. From My Hero Academia to A Man With A Gun For A Head. Yep. Yeah. There's a high chance there's something to tickle your fancy this season, but first, it's news time. Making headlines. Really? Sort of. Anime news. Demon Slayer's getting a film and new seasons for two of the biggest series out there. Well, maybe that's going a bit far. This is Kawhi Fi Anime News. Pioneering female Japanese animator Kazuko Nakamura has passed away on August 3rd, it's been reported. The 86-year-old, whose real name was Kazuko Kato, was a pioneering female animator at a time when the industry was dominated by men. She's worked as an animator for Toei Doga, the original name for Toei Animation, on its iconic 1958 feature film Hakujadan, also known as The White Snake, along with animes like Astro Boy, Princess Knight and Alakazama the Great. In Japanese cinemas, Weathering With You has continued its impressive run, selling over 10 million tickets just in Japan. The film has saw a bounce back up the rankings, returning to number three, just behind the live-action adaptation of Kaguya-sama Love is War. Sci-fi love story Hello World has also opened to Japan, holding the number six spot in its second week. Shonen Adventure series Demon Slayer Kimitsu no Yaiba has announced the series will be receiving a sequel film. The film, titled Demon Slayer Kimitsu no Yaiba Demon Train Arc, was officially announced as going ahead in the series' 26th episode and will feature a returning cast and crew. The series is due to premiere on Toonami on October 12th with its availability to stream across Hulu, Crunchyroll and Funimation. Academy City-centred anime, A Certain Scientific Railgun, is getting a third season in January 2020, according to the series' website. Named A Certain Scientific Railgun T, the series follows the recent third season of A Certain Magical Index and last season's A Certain Scientific Accelerator, all part of what's known as the Raildex franchise. The previous season staff and crew are returning, with band Fripside also returning to do the opening theme. 
And a third season is also on the way for anti-gravity string anime, Is It Wrong to Prick Up Girls in a Dungeon, with an OVA also on the way. The franchise's second season and film aired last season, with the OVA expected in late January and season three coming in summer 2020. Konosuba's highly anticipated film, The Legend of Crimson, will be getting a release in US cinemas this November, as part of an agreement between Crunchyroll and Fathom Events. The film will screen in over 600 theatres in the United States on November 12th at 7pm local time. No other international release dates are known at this stage, but hopefully this will mean the show will appear on their streaming services soon. Heading to the bookshelves, Hinomaru Sumo will be receiving an extra epilogue chapter on the weekly Shonen Jump Plus app on October 4th. The series ended in July this year, with the 28th and final volume of the manga shipping in December. The manga also inspired a 24-episode anime series which aired in 2018. And big news from the world of anime streaming, Sony Pictures TV has announced that it and Aniplex are planning to consolidate three of Sony's anime acquisitions into one joint venture. US-based Funimation, France-based Wakanami, and Australia's Madman Anime Group, who run Anime Lab, will all be consolidated underneath the Funimation brand, though whether the individual companies will be rebranded is unclear at this stage. Sony has been making a string of major purchases around the works with agreements with Hulu, Chinese streaming platform Billy Billy and purchasing the UK's manga entertainment earlier this year. And that's your anime news for the week ending October 6, 2019. Yeah, firstly, rest in peace, Nakamura-san. Thank mm. you so much for Absolutely. all of your contributions. Um, 86 is a, good, is a pretty good innings. Oh, it certainly is. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's crazy to think that you know, during the fifties, when it was such a difficult time to be in, you know, a, a female anima, female anything in any yeah, male dominated industry. Yeah, to have to have a job at all as yeah, a woman, which is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, working on Astro Boy. Yeah, wow. that is Huge. pretty awesome. Like, well done, well done. Incredible. I would like to say I very much appreciated anti gravity string. Okay? <laughs> uh-huh. Well, it is it's what not it is, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's not. And yeah, the costume design for that show is a little bit wacky sometimes. Oh, well, yeah. for a lot of anime, okay, I guess let's face she's, it. She's magical. <laughs> So I love the fact that she wears Magical thongs Hestia as well. Magical Hestia is here for the day. We <laughs> all love her, it's safe to say. And can we? Can I just say, um, probably already know this, but in Australia, thongs are also what? We wear on our flops. feet. Yeah, yeah, we wear them on our feet. <laughs> this is um, a constant little thing that we throw at the Americans when we decide to tell them about it. On the UK, the, the, the UK the, the get Brits. really funny. Oh, yeah, <laughs> actually, I, I remember I was um, I once asked, oh, can I borrow your thongs? And she was like, you what? I was like, no, 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 no. no. Why, by radio. Big, big thongs. Flip flops, Flip whatever flops. you call them, you know. <laughs> um, one thing I'm excited for is that we're finally starting to see Connor Sabah's uh, film getting international releases. Now, whether that means we'll get it over here with Crunchyroll being I the partner so. for the international release, it might be a case we can only get it on the streaming service. But, you know, that's still a good step. And that's November... Um, Beginning of November, that that's oh. coming out, so that's going to be pretty amazing. I'm still hyped for it. Konosuba maintains its position as one of our favorite animes of all time. We mm-hmm. got to watch the first episode once again when we introduced <laughs> it to another friend. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, the coming of over, people, have you seen Konosuba? The amount of people <laughs> that we've just like shoved this anime down their throats. It's just it's it's. The, the number is increasing and it's, it will continue yeah. to increase. It will. It definitely will. We, very we soon believe in this anime. Very soon it's going to be like, uh, <laughs> you know, when you go to one of those Rocky Horror picture show yeah. nights where everyone not only sings along to the song, but talks along to the script and makes yeah. all the jokes. It's going to be like that with us. We're going to like speak along with the thing. I'm going to try and not because <laughs> that <laughs> would really resist, ruin it for but people. But it may <laughs> happen, at least even in our heads. Actually, when I think about it, was that the first time you guys had seen the dub of Connor Sabah? Uh, second time for me no I've seen it yeah okay cool no just checking we introduced people in Belgium to the dub I believe oh we did too (laughs) we did did too well we need to go and talk about this anime season and Mm. uh, as I mentioned there is a bucket load to get through Hawaii Fire Radio that's a lot of anime oh there's so many no I didn't watch them all awesome anime (laughs) <laughs> what are you doing, Toto? Just looking at all this, like, all of these buttons. Like, look yeah, don't touch them. Don't press the button. Don't press the buttons. I can press the buttons. Look what happens. All right, audience, welcome to my nightmare. Coco is attempting to take over the show. <laughs> <laughs> it will happen one day. Right, autumn bit anime bit, season. There is a absolute metric tonne 
Yeah, there's a lot. There's oh a lot that looks really God. good. There's a lot that looks. <laughs> well, we've yeah. we've we have cut out a few which we just didn't feel like this was a good you know spot to keep away <laughs> from the buttons. Um, this was a good time to talk about them, and that, that's quite simply because there's a lot of kids shows coming out this. Uh, this season as well. Interesting. Um, is it like uh, school holidays over there? Or? I'm not sure. I mean, it's autumn, which is not normally the holiday season for them, but um, mm. we will find out sooner or later. But we do need to start with the short form anime. Mm. And There's not too many this season, is there? Th- there's only Are four, there? and one of them, which is the first one, we're not actually sure if this is actually a short form. We're, we're assuming it's a short form based on the information from its previous incarnations because mm. it had an anime before. Yeah. Okay. And this is... Africa, no salary man. And this looks amazing. <laughs> it looks so good. When I first saw this, I was just first like, okay, they're taking back Kimber the, lo- the White Lion. So they have every right to do. They have every right. It just looks awesome. So what we basically see when we see the trailer is that it's a bunch of like African savanna animals wearing suits working as salarymen in Japan. Yes, and I discovered when I was looking through the list of characters, is that actually a honey badger character? And I'm just sitting there going, is he going to be the bully of the office? Or is just going to be like in um, Dinosaurs, how the T-Rex was the complete pushover? Yeah. Maybe it'll be that. Might be that, yeah. I mean, this has a lot in common with uh, some of the shows we've seen on Netflix. Like, I mean... Agrotsuko? Yeah, yes. exactly. Mm. Very similar sort of, you know, explosive, oh no, everything's wrong. But instead of it being a Western production, it's definitely very Japanese. Oh, yeah. yes. And yeah. uh, have you guys have seen the um, the preview trailer they did, right? Uh, with yes. the live action, with the, the voice, voice actors. actors. The voice actors with their faces all painted Aww. up. And just... so, so for those who haven't seen it, um, to promote um, African O Salary Man, they got the voice actors for each of the characters into a studio, suited them up, Put on makeup to look like their characters. Uh, oh, in the, the case, the lion it's one. So pretty good. It was good. A lion, a toucan, and a lizard. How great does I the lion one look? His I face is like the right shape yeah. and length. Oh, it's, it's and incredible. his hair was perfect. And yes. I just felt like he was like a dad that you wanted mm. to hug. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> and yeah, I actually have to agree with that. He's like, oh, you seem so lovely. But yeah. I mean, th- this is a show which is all animated. It's mm. not going to have any live action. And there's another show this season which has done a, s- a similar thing yeah. with wrestlers. It's interesting. Yeah. Um, which we'll get to later. It's sort of like there's a blur between the anime world and the real life. And mm-hmm. uh, I don't think that's a door that many people want to mm. knock on. So mm. the sum- summary for African O'Salary Man is the comedy follows a lion, a toucan, and a lizard as they live the lives of office workers in a capitalist society in Japan, mm. while also dealing with their unique situations as animals living beyond the savanna and the food chain. Um, you know, do not eat your friends. Um, <laughs> which is another theme from this season as yes, well. The, yes, it is. It just looks like so, a visceral slice of randomness. I love yeah, it. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing this, mm. to be honest. You, you can catch this on Funimation and Wakanim, which is the European um, branch of Sony, oh. um, which I, I did mention in the news, actually. Um, we did see them last uh, time we were doing this, but didn't realise they were so important um, wow, okay. because they've been mm. bought out. Um, it's actually from a web manga originally. And That's there cool. has really? previously been a short form anime of this. So that's why we're not sure if this is short, short form or, or long form. Long yeah. form. We'll I have see. to wait and see. When does it start airing? Um, October 7th, or Monday. that's a Monday night at 12.30 That's two a. days M. away. It is. No, it's one day away. Might have to stay so, up for that. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, you can catch that, as I said, Funimation Wakanama. But <laughs> that brings us on to our next one, which is the third season of this. Yeah, yeah, I haven't heard of this before. Yeah, th- this one sort of slipped under our radar, like most things seem to. Uh, it's Anini Tsukeru Kusuri wa Nai Season 3. Which is, please take my brother away. And that's another three. web manga-based anime this season. Uh, um, yeah, This basically is the relationship between Mao and her older brother. They like to tease each other and they exploit at one another a mm-hmm. hundred times a day. Uh, there isn't a single peaceful day between these two. Um, however, when troubles come, Fen, her brother, will become a caring, loving mm. sibling who protects his little sister at all costs. We found the first episode on YouTube. I think mm. someone had shared it. And yeah, it seems like there's quite a lot of it on YouTube, actually. Mm. It's actually from a Chinese web manga. Mm. It's, oh, wow. it's not Japanese. That's a um, bit of a cultural, you know. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. It might be. Um, I mean, I wasn't that taken by it it doesn't i mean i mm. might give it a little well, bit of a look i mean it's a, short a three form, minutes so. a pop 
it's May as you well. can binge yeah. through it fairly quickly. I don't yeah. know. Imagine. It's I um uh, I had a relationship like that with my sister and I felt a sort of a connection with it. It's like two siblings sort of stooging each other over yeah. and over and I like that. And okay. honestly, from what I saw of the first episode, it sounds like the voice actors are having a really great time. Mm. Okay. Well, it's slice of life comedy in with the school setting in there. PG-13 rating. Um, it's got three studios working on it. Wow. Which is fan, Simultaneously? Yeah, Fanworks, Imagineer, and Planet Cartoon. I, I haven't had a chance to look into them, but I think they're all quite small studios. So hmm. I think one might be handling backgrounds, one might be handling voice production, and the other handling main animation mm. and key animation. That checks yeah. out. Um, but running for three minutes a pop, I didn't think, well, is that a minute each for each studio? <laughs> 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 We've got 12. I hope they're not paid on um On sales. On yeah, on that'll really suck. Rate. Um, 12 episodes um, airing on Monday as well at 9.50 at night. Um, we don't know okay. where you can watch it yet, though. Which yeah. is the problem. No one seems yeah. to have picked it up. The previous two seasons have been on Billy Billy, which is a Chinese streaming service, mm. um, who are now in an agreement with Funimation for streaming some of their stuff. Right. Um, but other than that, mm. don't know. Okay. But I mean, that does bring us to the next one, which really does make me question a lot of things because this yes. has also got a Chinese origin. Yeah. Dolls Frontline or Iyashi Hen. It's chibi. Yeah. I, so w- I wouldn't even say it's chibi. The characters all look like uh, Nendroid collectibles. Yeah, yeah. It's actually a, mo- a mini anime series based on a Chinese mobile game called Girls Frontline. So Girls, Girls Frontline and Dolls Frontline. Ah, uh, I see what they've done. Maybe there's a little bit of a So they've probably got the girl, Girls Frontline is the main core series, right? Where they are girls. Dolls Frontline explains the animation art style they've gone for. for is the, the chibi yeah. fight. Oh, that, yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. I mean, I get it. Um, is this going to be another magical girl nurture thing? Because I was really burnt by special ops Oscar. Yeah. I don't uh, want to go back down that path. I'm not expecting much. As I mean, let, let's be honest. I don't expect much when it's based off a mobile game. There have been mm. occasions where it's really surprised us. Uh, I, I don't know. I feel mm. this this might have a very specific target demographic. I yeah. think this might be one of those programs just they've said, look, we'll, I, we'll make this because it's going to be sold to a Chinese audience, mm. which is why it's gone to, you know, you a think small uh, studio. It's dedicated to the fans, perhaps. Perhaps, yeah, yeah. I mean, I thought it looked a bit samey until it went chibi. Yeah. So I'm happy to give it the three episode treatment. Mm. Um, if we each can epi- find yeah. it. <laughs> each episode runs for four minutes. Uh, there's going to be 24 episodes in the mm. season as on Saturdays at 1am. Hmm. Um, what studio is behind it, actually? Studio is Big Firebird Cultural Media. Uh, <laughs> okay. And, yeah, like you said before, <laughs> real um, you reference Billy Billy. Yep. That's where you can watch it. Oh, well, there you go. Mm-hmm. Yep. Because they're really coming to their own. You'll, you'll actually hear a lot through this show that there's actually quite a few... Um, We've, we've added quite a few streaming services to um, our list of people we know about and we've researched to find out where you can watch stuff. So mm. we've got stuff in Scandinavia and Europe and Southeast Asia We're building and up Russia. our knowledge. We fi- we're finding lots of things. I, I have to thank uh, my list because they're, they're amazing. Yes. Um, but that does bring us to the last, the <laughs> fourth one of the series. Now, this Tenka is... Com- Yakin. Welcome to Meiji Hall. This is once again based off a game. It is by Lidden Films, who, as we know, do a lot of stuff of varying quality. See, Mm -hmm. it used to be you make a series and if it's successful, a game is made of it. Not the other way around. Not the other way around. (laughs) I I mean, there there are some which we'll talk about later where, you know, you you can understand why that's happened. And, I mean, if you look at uh, gaming these days, a lot of, like, great intellectual properties are produced as games Mm. on, like, PlayStation or Xbox and stuff like that. So it kind of wouldn't be surprised that they'd like to, you know, take hold of that popularity and mm. to, like t- extend the story, tell a bit more. Well, this is the latest short form anime in the Tenka Hyakin series. There have been other short form ones. This one runs for about five minutes a pop. Action, adventure, fantasy, martial arts, historical. What's it's it historical. about? The Tenka Hyakin franchise centers around the Mitsurugi, maidens who are physical incarnations of ancient swords. <laughs> they have pledged to live peaceful lives after the era of warfare, but now return to the battle to fight a new foe so, that has arisen during the alternative version of the Meiji period. So this is like a female We Love Rice. They have very nice looking swords. Uh, you know what I had to notice? The size of their eyes. And yeah, they're 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 also very dressed appropriately for combat. Uh, yeah, they're yeah, 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 for, yeah very for sword appropriate fight, fighting. Yeah, you sh- the, the size of their you, you know have, eyes have, having is... less things to get in the way of the oh, fight yeah, is yeah, very yeah, great. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. important. Are you two saying that they have big boobs and are scantily clad? 
Maybe. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, it's, look, it's it's it on Sundays it at ten fifty four p.m. Very specific time, Japan. Well done. Um, we don't know how many episodes, but likely twelve, based on the previous shows. Mm-hmm. And um, it doesn't have any streaming agreements yet, but it doesn't actually premiere until October the thirteenth. So we still got another week for them to sort out where mm. it's going to live. Actually, no. Now that I've look, looking at pictures of it, man, look at the size of their eyes. Yeah. How yeah. round they are. Massive. Touch my eyes. <laughs> Bulbous. <laughs> and that's all the short form. <laughs> Which brings us on to um, the new shows from this season. And there are a lot. Um, oh, yes. There is an uh, absolute ton of good and interesting prospective shows. We've had to cut out some of the very obvious ones, which look like they are... Such round eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Still going. I think you're stuck there. <laughs> She's stuck it's there. Very She's spherical. on the loop. <laughs> all right. And wide. Okay, <laughs> moving right along. We need to talk about one which I think has ripped off about six other shows, oh, but is based, as opposed to being based on like a manga or a light novel or a game, this is a completely new idea. It's mm. based off music. Uh, yes, we are, of course, talking about actors. Songs Connection. Mm. This, mm. See, I thought this was another We Love Rice as well when I saw it. But it's not. it seems like they're just... Yeah, I know, I know. Silliness. So, I mean, so this centers in a magical world of um, the seventh of ten school districts circled within a 130 meter tall wall. Certain rail decks attack on Titan. Yes. Mm. Uh, entry and uh, is restricted apart from like any official kind of means. Certain rail decks. Mm-hmm. The academy is fully autonomous by its own government, but Certain rail decks. it strives for independence. The school allows students to engage in club activities after school, which come with a strangely unique system. Each club is ranked according to its overall accumulated points gathered from various club activities and school events. Uh, Points can be received by winning at the school's um, uh, major contests. Most most idol animes. Yes. Uh, Many students compete. The members in the club work hard to win the contests and achieve their goals. It'd be euphonium. So what do you get get with these extra points? Uh, It's unclear. Yeah. So why are they bothering? The plot sounds like someone decided to merge a magic index, certain magic index with idle animes, Attack on Titan, and pretty much anything else which has a classroom setting which they could shove in. Yeah, I just don't get it. Why is there a bunch of schools inside... A walled off. Wall. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Is it to keep the talent out? <laughs> <laughs> Could be. Pardon me. <laughs> I, I do have to say though. The music for this yeah. sounds like it could be incredibly well produced. Mm. Um, I do know that it's a brand new studio. They're called Drive. Um, I they have not done anything before. Mm. Um, I think they might have done a couple of OVAs. So as crazy mm. as this all is, like I hope it does well for them. Yeah, well, it's a, a new studio. School, yeah. school music anime. You know, it's it's got a very obvious demographic. And oh yeah. it will always get traction. We love rice. <laughs> Not we love that rice. is seriously what I was thinking when I was watching it. Except that this they runs for twenty five like... minutes. Mm. Yeah, so I, I I feel like this is definitely it's going to be like a boy idol style anime, yeah. but with <laughs> elements of like K on Hibiki Euphonium and all the other big musical ones yeah. and a wall. Yeah, and a wall. I've, yeah, I've um, noticed there there are no females in that preview at all. Yeah, there were. Either. Was it two previews we watched? Yeah, um, yeah. This, so, pre- this premieres yeah. on October sixth at eleven thirty, i.e. for us that's tonight. Oh. Um, after we finish recording, um. It should be interesting, but we don't know where you can watch it yet because no one's put up their hand to say, hey, we're streaming it. So it might only be available on Japanese TV. We will huh. find out and we will mm. let you know. Mm-hmm. And we'll give this a go because well, I, I mean, want to find out more about it. Yeah, I mean, with it being a new studio, I imagine it's got limited um, exposure as far as you know organizing mm-hmm. streaming agreements and so forth. So that might be the, the go. Yeah. But that brings us on to the first of several sports animes okay. this season. Yes. Ahiro no Sora. He may be shorter in stature, but Sora Kurumatani can soar and score on the basketball court. With a passion for the sport he inherited Ooh. from his mother, usually it's the dad. It is. I like we, this. I think this is Sora vows to her. Sounds sounds like um, uh, Midoriya. Yeah. So I will mom, become powerful, I'll mother. Do, I'll be a hero. <laughs> he vows to her that he'll take top prize at a high school basketball tournament, but there's one problem. His new school's basketball club has turned into a hangout for delinquents. Will Sora's sheer tenacity and amazing three-point shooting change their minds? You have a thought, Kenny? I can't help but be reminded of two other animes as I hear about this. 
uh, a you certain one about s- another sport. Uh, well, Both first a one about a string instrument club. Oh, oh yeah. Yes, uh, that was from last season. Uh, yeah. Ko- Koto Kono Oto to... Tamari, I think. Yes, which has a one. second season this season. Yeah, mm. that's a club that's the about Koto to be club. disbanded and the room has become a hive of delinquents. It's also reminding me straight off, which I expect your second one is, is Hino Matsuri. Exactly. Which we mentioned yeah. in the news. It's like he's great yeah. at the sport, except he's too short to compete in like, which the Which is a sumo league. wrestling one, yeah. yeah. I have to wonder about And this. the club also became a hangout for delinquents. Yeah, like mm. that is... Um, <laughs> that Does is... this happen to a lot of clubs in Japan? Yeah, <laughs> obviously there's an issue with delinquents. No, it seems to be like a staple kind of story, and I have to wonder about that. Um, these similar stories pop up a lot in their sort of pers- respective genres. For School Club 1, it's that the club is going to shut down in case yeah. they don't get enough members. And, yeah, I have to wonder, why is this? I, I think the only one I can remember where they're not at risk of getting shut down is normally... Established sports clubs, like mm. track... Mm. Track and field and, and stuff field, like yeah. that, um, or it was uh, Genshiken, which is you know th- you got to the end of the first season and then they got threatened to be shut down. Yeah, uh, I think uh, for Genshiken it's like they had the characters sort of there and established, and he was sort of introduced to them yeah, one was. by one. I think maybe that's sort of like a character introduction means it's like okay, the club has no members, so we have to bring in yeah, new and interesting personalities. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Maybe that's the gist of it, but I could mm. be wrong. Well, we have two other um, school club animes like this this season where they are about to be shut down and then have to find mm. new members very this, quickly. This delinquent <laughs> looks like Kaniki from Greece. <laughs> he does and I'm a just bit. wondering how come bad guys either have crazy villain eyebrows or no eyebrows at all? And the, the, do ducks swim underwater? Okay. Um, I don't know the answer to that, but I think that might be to do with the band who's mm. doing it. Didn't they have like Duck Pillow or something as the name of the opening theme or yes. something like that? Um, there is a band called Pillow, but... Yeah, the, put it this way. This is very shonen. I love it. I, yeah. I'm very interested in this. I'm not really big on sports animes, but this has piqued my interest. Um, this is actually going to be in four parts, four cores. Oh. So 13 episodes here, 13 episodes somewhere else, four yeah. seasons essentially of 13 so episodes. It's going to be a decently long arc. Mm. Sounds like there's a demand for it, of yeah, course. Yeah, 24 minutes long. R- it's created by Dio Media. Um, the manga's got 50 volumes. That's the origin, and that's finished, I believe. Mm-hmm. And that's going to air on Wednesdays at 6.25 p.m. in Japan. Um, it's sports, drama, school, shonen, and one thing of note is that the character faces are animated sort of strange. Yeah, They're sort of squashed mm. from where the nose is to the jawline, and it's very unusual compared to what we're used to seeing because we used yeah, to see quite different. a lot of room there. I think it's, it's a very sort different of a style. unique style of animation. I, I like it. I want to see what they do with this because it's it looks very emotive and we aren't mm. getting the, like the cliche Titan faces from it when they're doing weird yeah, things. Yeah. <laughs> so it'll be interesting to That's see if good. Yeah, that happens. Um, <coughs> but this brings us to something completely unrelated, our first isekai. Yay. Which Yay. is Ascendance of a Bookworm. And this actually sounds really cool. Yeah. Hmm. So the summary for it is um, Motosu Uran a book-loving college student was supposed to enter the job of her dreams after graduation at a library, but was killed during a massive earthquake. Guess what kills her? Um, a book? Lots of books. <laughs> <laughs> Wishing for reincarnation... I actually didn't know that. That was a guess. Yeah. Wishing for reincarnation in order to read more, she's reincarnated into a world with a low literacy level and very few books, limited only to the nobility of the world to own them because they're expensive to make. As she uh, has reincarnated as a five-year-old daughter of a lowly, sh- so, uh, lowly not a Lolita soldier, um, <laughs> there is no access to books. So, you know, if there are no books, what are you going to do? She decides to sp- set up her own printing factory, essentially. So she's started writing books, creating books, finding ways to actually make books. And her goal is to become a librarian in this new world, no matter what happens. Aww. It's, um, it's uh, so optimistic. I said this once for another isekai that came out, which uh, disappointed us. But yeah, this is a very unique take on the genre. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, there is magic present in this world. We've seen that in the trailer. Mm. But it's less about, you know, fighting monsters and leveling up and, like, getting magical weapons and discovering a hidden power. It says a lot when you find an isekai which has slice of life as a tag. Yeah, and it's also, it's about, you know, introducing literacy to a less than literate, uh, f- you know, medieval world and I feel like this is going to be another instance of Japan doing us an education on I think you might be right. how yeah. books came to be in certain places. Well I mean I also like the fact that it's an anime about books in a medieval world which has a class system. Something which you know was very prevalent in the medieval society but mm. is often overlooked in isekais. Oh very much so. Because we, we don't hear them go oh yeah but you can't do that because you're not royalty or yeah, anything. Or it's just like no I'll just use power to become royalty. Yeah exactly which class is adventurer again. Yeah <laughs> uh, murder hobo. Um 
<laughs> but I'm also intrigued that she's not a hero. She's just someone intellectual who's been transported. There's no, you are going to be the hero and defeat the demon lord or anything like that. Yeah, and I don't think there is a demon lord. Th- in there's this. no, you know, there's a big danger incoming or anything like that. It's just, you know, go make some books as a young kid. It, mm-hmm. You know, actually, you know what it reminds me of? Mm-hmm. If it's for my daughter, I'd even defeat the demon lord. Yeah. Just without the demon lord and father component. Yeah, it's... um. Ah, that one already mm. like changes the whole fantasy genre up a True. bit because even while that's happening, it's sort of it's an aside from yeah. the main story, which is more about you know family and life and living. Whereas in this case, they just kind of cut out the whole aside. Yeah, and exactly. just went stuck with that. Uh, the art is nice, kind of early two thousands art style and character mm. design, which is a bit different from what we've seen lately, which is really nice. Um, PG thirteen, originally from a light novel, twenty four minutes, fourteen episodes, not twelve or thirteen. Interesting. 14. So I'm suspecting there might be like a double or triple episode at the end. Um, that's going to air on Thursdays, just after midnight. So I'm not entirely clear. Mm. No, that, that's right. So that's Thursday morning. I adjusted the times because Japan count up until one o'clock as the previous day. Mm. Oh. So if it was 12.30 p.m. on Wednesday in Japan, that's 12.30 a.m. on Thursday for us. Okay. It's it's how okay. their scheduling works in Japan. It's very interesting. Um, Unusual. Yeah, it's by Ajia Do is the studio, and you can catch that on Crunchyroll and Muse Asia if you're in Southeast Asia. Hmm. Hopefully there should be a few more added to the list, which is normally what happens. Oh, and I think we mentioned uh, Ahiro no Sora is uh, available on Crunchyroll and High Dive. Mm-hmm. So oh, yes. that makes it easy. That so... does bring us to a questionable one, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, Assassin's yeah. Creed. Sorry, Assassin's Pride. <coughs> you mean uh, Sword Art on... I mean, <coughs> no. Yeah, Oh, no. you, you don't mean Arafaretta? No. No, no. Yeah, this mean... one uh, this mm. one isn't an isekai, actually. Yeah, I know, which is really unusual considering mm. the style. Hi, yeah. Kirito, I didn't expect to find you here. Yeah. yeah. It's got Kirito and Asuna in it, even though they are not called that. They and look exactly... Like they look. Not exactly These are the characters from Sword Art Online, probably one of the most popular very, series in the yeah, last decade. Yes. Similar to those characters. So, if I may... <laughs> please yes. do. In a world... Where only nobles wield the sacred powers of mana to wage war against the creatures of darkness. The young Meridia shows no ability for magic, putting her in a precarious situation. Under the guise of tutelage, the ruthless assassin Kufa is sent to assess Meridia's abilities and determine if she is a true-born heir to the Angel family. If she does not measure up to her family's expectations, another more ruthless plan is set in motion. They're going to kill her, aren't they? Oh, totally. Yeah, Assassins and killing kind of goes hand in hand, don't it? Yeah, it's... um. Okay, so it sounds like it's trying to go the political intrigue angle, but from what we saw of the trailers, there will be a little of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it. from what I saw in the previews, it's ticked off all the tropes. I get the idea that the girl with the light hair, like coloured bob, doesn't talk much and has a dark side. I feel Ooh. like I've seen all of these yeah. characters before. I, I also um, expect that during it, one of those characters is going to get angry at the assassin who looks like Carito, and it's going to pursue with... Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's going to be mean, very. Th- this could. Yeah. I stress the could part. It could be interesting. It could be unique. But the way that they have advertised mm. it makes it look very run of the mill. Pretty I, much. I like the design of the town. Mm. But everything I saw in the preview was just stuff I've seen. It's felt like I've seen it before. Mm. And the pandy shot in the preview was yeah. the little cherry on top of the nope cape. <laughs> yeah, that's fair I'm enough. not keen on this. Actually, I think this anime has done something for me. It mm. has given me insight. I've found out something which tells me instantly about an anime, everything I need to know about it. Okay. So this is sort of like a magical medieval sort of a setting, right? Yeah. The main character is wearing a modern business type Windsor knot tie. Uh huh. Those two don't correlate. No, they do not. Mm. But but yet it happens a lot. It seems to happen a lot in these sort of animes, like the sort of the business suit thing in a fantasy world. I think that's actually you know self insert. Not a self insert. I feel like that's just sort of like a tell for me. That tells me something about the anime which tells me it's going to be a bad time. I think you're going to have to retract that a bit later on. Oh? Yeah. And we'll get to Ooh. that. Um, because we'll there's some, there's an anime you're interested in watching this season and I know for a fact one of the characters has a tie. Alright, point it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing I will say for Assassin's Pride is that the animation of the world itself is interesting and mm. the idea behind it is interesting but I am... I would actually... If I was a betting man... 
I would put money on that this is going to end up in a pseudo harem for our Carido knockoff. Pretty much. And yeah. he's going to be like, I don't want a harem. Yeah. But they're going to be like, no, Senpai, you must help us. No, trust me. <laughs> now, th- this might be good. We won't know for a few weeks. So, Assassin's Pride is originally from a light novel. It's yeah. fantasy created by EMT Squared Studio, who have done bits and pieces around the place. I mean... 23-minute runtime. Yeah. Likely 12 episodes. They haven't announced the official run length yet. It's going to air on Thursdays at 11.30pm, which means you'll be able to catch it on Anime Lab, High Dive and Annie Plus Asia the next day. Mm-hmm. I'm mm. I'm happy to give it a three episode treatment. I'll three, join you in that. Three, three, three episode treatment? Yeah, why not? Let's give it a shot. Just to see if we're wrong or not. This um, next one. Uh, Azure Lane. Now. So when I saw this preview, I was like, where's the lane? Or is it her name? Someone's <laughs> name. This is another Chinese video game. This is just Magical Girls. So, the story. After the appearance of mysterious female aliens known as the Sirens, uh, humans were unable to even sail the Seven Seas peacefully. This led to the creation of <laughs> young women with the power of warships. I'll say that again. Young women with the power of warships. How young? Are they high school age? Yes. Of course. Uh, aircraft carriers and other similar vessels basically adorn their outfits. They have cannon arms and masts. <laughs> this is why we watch anime, isn't it? Pretty much. This kind of insanity. It's is pretty nuts. So, however, not everyone can agree how best to like use these female soldiers, leading to fights between countries, girl ship versus girl ship, as well as against the alien menace. Now, this is a show which has a huge following online in Japan because of the game. Is it because mm. it's lollies with heavy artillery? It's not just lollies. It's every girl you can think of. There is so many characters in this. It's a bit nuts. So yeah, everyone and, uh, has a favourite. So you've got uh, like... The hero characters who are like young women wearing bits of battleship over their, yeah, you know, combat mm-hmm. inefficient outfits, and they're fighting against like fox girls and cat girls with nine QB tails of magic. See, it's what like, I'm expecting is someone saw Strike Witches about a decade ago and went, <laughs> "What if they're not planes? What if they're ships?" <laughs> <laughs> it's like they're that. I that, mean, that was I, well I, thought out, I guess. There's, there's there's a certain challenge involved in anthropomorphizing. Um, yeah, there is. You know, thing, things that aren't sentient. Um, you, you don't, and I'm, you don't I'm, say. I'm glad that people are giving it a go. I mean, we've seen swords so far. Why not battleships? Swords with enormous eyes. Yeah, they <laughs> these do are ba- have These are battleships eyes, with enormous everythings. Yes. Um, Wide. They're, they're also not cool. just battleships, are they? They're also Bulbous. like your planes and like your carriers and all this other stuff. And mm. th- you can't see any men in the no, video preview. No, there aren't but any I guys. But I know for a fact that there are guys who are the commanders of these you know, oh, individual okay. divisions. Hmm. That's the only it's point where bit, there are guys. I mean, I mean, yeah, I, I, there weren't any guys there. Yeah. Like, did you... I'm sh- I'm <laughs> yeah, I saw... And the setting of it is uh, hilarious as well. It's like this big tropical island with a single seaport and it's got all these lovely little shops and oh, yeah, just it's anime girls walking around. You don't place. see a single male. It's just... This is just going to be a 24-7 beach episode. Somehow it It reminded me of Akashic Records. Oh, yeah. Magic Instructor. Yeah, yeah. Magic Instructor, yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm keen to give it a look. Well, look, we'll have a look. I mean, the animation quality does look good, but whether or not the story holds up is another matter altogether. I expect this to be essentially like Infinite Stratos, where there'll be the first episode, there'll be something big, and the last episode will be something big, and everything else in between will be just won't matter. Pretty much. Mm. Now, this airs on Thursdays at 11.30pm. You can catch that on Anime Lab, Funimation, Hulu, and Wakanim. Which is just great. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I love saying that. Wakanim. Wakanim, Wakanim, Wakanim. Wakanim real hard. But that... that you know, let, let's let's change tracks from this because we're going to be leaving, you know, something which is very clearly not going to have much plot to something that's going to be very plot heavy. Oh, yes. Yeah, this is Babylon. Um, Political thriller? CSI yeah, Miami? Do uh, we get to yell, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Zen Saizaki, a public prosecutor at Tokyo District Public Prosecutor's Office. <laughs> what a, lo- what a mouthful, eh? <laughs> He's investigating a case of illegal clinical research related to a drug, a drug company and a university. Uh, during the investigation, he finds a file kept by an anesthesiologist, mm. which includes blood that is mixed with hair, skin, and a 
and a piece of paper that's covered with the letter F in a scrawl. Mm. As he investigates, he realises there's a hidden plot that is connected with a huge election as well as to a certain person who is in charge of it. Now, have you guys seen Ali G? <laughs> what? Yes. Yeah, he used the word Babylon to describe... A certain thing. Um, Never mind. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so it does seem like a political thriller. Yeah, this, um, is, this is the political thriller based on a novel. I've seen many yeah. animes which are based on light novels, but nothing based on like a novel. So this would be like finding a book over in Japan, like the length of like a Stephen King novel or something, yeah. and adapting that. I'm pretty much reminded of uh, Tom Clancy stuff. Oh, yeah. He's an author who writes a lot of war stories, and plenty of his stuff has been adapted into movies over here mm. and video games as well. Mm -hmm. But they are always very, very serious and always very, very, you know, very thriller based. And I feel like this is exactly one of those things. This yeah. is something that's going to be like another for me. Well, this is created by a studio called Reverut. This is their first ever production. There's a few this season as well. It's wow. actually quite surprising how many new studios have come out. And like you actually look at the like animation and budget for this. This yeah. is a first for this studio? This is their first full-length series. They've done two other OVAs. That's it. Wow. Which is a pretty mm -hmm. big deal. The art style's sort of psychopath-like with sort of mm. hints of Death Note it's to the colours. Yes, yes thing. pretty much. Oh, now that you've actually mm. said that, yes, Death Note in the colour scenes, especially yeah. whenever... Kira is having one of his monologues and everything yeah. is drenched in red and yeah. dark with the flashing light. I love yes. yeah. the look of the Ooh. animation. I'm very keen on this. Um, so this airs on Mondays at 10pm. Mm. And this uh, is an Amazon exclusive, isn't it? Yeah, you can wow. watch it on Amazon Prime. So mm. Prime users get onto it. It runs for 23 minutes. Uh, unknown how many episodes, likely 12. So Now th th this, this could be really good. Uh, because it's based on a novel and it's not an original content because if they did that, it could go the same way Hero Mask did with a yes. really strong start and then just kind of losing its way straight away. Uh, mm. so time that, will tell, time question. will tell. Yeah. We haven't seen a good thriller of this variety in a while. I, I stress the good part. Mm. There have been other ones which have attempted and it just haven't yeah, really Yeah, and it fizzles out or something. Which brings us to Another something thriller. Which is uh, actually technically a thriller, yeah. So this yeah. is drama, psychological, shonen, slice of life. Mm. It's a very, very anticipated series because this has won the 2018 Manga Taisho Award and the 42nd Kodansha Manga Awards. We're talking about B-stars, as in beast and stars slammed together as a single word. Now, here's the thing. This is Zootopia. This is Zootopia. Yeah. This is a dark and gritty it's reboot of Zootopia. In a school it does setting. seem it. I liked how um, in the synopsis it says Rogoshi the Wolf is... You know, he's he's uh, he's misunderstood. He's, he's a member of the drama club, yeah. and despite his menacing appearance, appearance, he has a very gentle heart. Now that reminded me of this. I now a nice shark, not a mindless eating machine. If I am to change this image, I must first change myself. I am a nice shark. My name is Bruce. <laughs> uh, Coco, do you just carry that sound effect around with I you? I feel like I do. Um, <laughs> is that I, your message I'm, tone at the moment? No, <laughs> it might be, though. I love that scene. It's so funny. For those wondering, funny. that was Bruce, the friendly shark from <laughs> Finding, yes, Nemo. Finding, Finding Nemo. Nemo. Finding Nemo. As well as his other sharky friends. Yes. And, uh, yeah. Now, I'm really excited for this. I, I will give you the full synopsis. So, um, it's a world populated by anthropomorphic animals, herbivores, and carnivores coexist with each other, much like Zootopia. For the adolescents at Cherryton Academy, school life is filled with hope, romance, distrust, and uneasiness. The main character is Rigoshi the Wolf, a member of the drama club, being a very gentle-hearted person. Throughout most of his life, he's always been an object of fear and hatred by other animals because of his wolf heritage, and he's been quite accustomed to that lifestyle. But soon, he finds himself becoming more involved with his fellow classmates who have their own share of insecurities and finds his life in school changing slowly. The preview mm. trailer shows that really good. there's going to be crime involved in this. Yeah, yeah, it's. I feel like it's got some pretty uh, interesting themes to spread across. It's got mm. you know that whole teen angst going. Mm. I reckon this one's going to be a bit of a memorable mm. one. I'm really yeah. looking forward to it. I love seeing anthropomorphized animals in shows. I just think there's so much material you can have, like the interactions due to their place in the animal kingdom versus their place in the current world. It's like the all it's the show, kind of show I always wanted to watch when I was a kid. Mm. Mm. Kind of takes me back to uh, Disney's uh, Robin Hood with oh, the yes. boxes. Yes. Oh, I love and uh, Lady Cluck. <laughs> <laughs> Lady Cluck. <laughs> I remember that. Oh, oh, was it Lady Cluck or was it Dame Cluck? 
I can't. I can't remember. But Friar Cluck. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Friar Tuck was the. I think it was a badger, or was he I a he mole? Was. Or but on, on the note of the various animals they have in this, it did also make me immediately look for a very certain type of character in there, and I then Just did see it. You know Their principal is a panda. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's the principal. Which makes me very excited because <laughs> I can keep using this dead meme. <laughs> <laughs> it's not dead. It'll just like it, it, you it, don't it's say a comic, no to the panda. It, it's a notice. comic book death. It'll come back. In strange eons, even death may die. Look, the animation style is sort of a bit hybrid CG. It might be a little bit jarring for some, but I think we're pretty used to it now. Ever since uh, Knights of Sidonia, yeah, to be absolutely. Honest. You get really kind of used to it. It seems to be it. more and more present these days, and it's becoming better, which mm. is also the challenge with it because it, sometimes it really hits that uncanny valley where you're like that's not quite right this doesn't seem to have done it so I'm, I'm quite excited I've had people tell me that it they find it a kind of a lazy approach to producing like animation and mm. stuff like that but I have to disagree it's about you know getting a story across getting a unique style across and for this, for Beastars, I feel like that is such an iconic look yeah especially with the I uh, do have one concern hmm. and it's a big one. Oh, this is a Netflix exclusive. Oh. Uh, uh, mm, oh, mm. So they are hit and miss. Exactly. Is so it hit or miss? now the the issue is is that because it's a manga, they they've got to stick to the plot. They can't like, deviate. They yeah. can't deviate. And as long as they do that, it's been done by. It's not actually being created by Netflix. Netflix have just bought the right to it, which is um, it's been made by a studio called Orange. You've done a lot of other interesting sort of work over the years. Um, because they're in charge of it, hopefully Netflix hasn't got any say in production. Because when Netflix get involved in production, they stuff it up. Yeah, we all saw Death Note. Yeah. Um, well. It runs for 23 <laughs> minutes. Uh, we think 12 episodes. Could be 24. There's enough content there for them to do it if they need to, but it's not been announced officially yet. It runs on Friday at 12.55 in the morning. Wow. So, uh, okay. in Japan at least. that's Or at least that's the time it's going to go live on Netflix. So, maybe that's been done for a reason. Who knows? Um, but, uh, yeah, as I said, you can catch it on Netflix. Mm. So, this next one is quite interesting. Uh, cautious Hero. The hero is overpowered but overly cautious. This... Um... <laughs> That was the title, by the way. Yeah, so it was the synopsis. I'm not going to lie. It looks generic, but I think that mm. the main character, at least, looks generic. But I think that might be the point. Oh, yeah? I, yeah. I think it might be a commentary on generic gamers that are seen in every other anime who will purposely do everything they can to level up without, say, leaving the starting area. <laughs> I feel judged. Feel they they yeah. did a uh, South Park episode about that, I think, didn't they? Yeah, probably. I uh, <laughs> no, that actually uh, strikes me at the core. I've been playing a lot of a Star Wars online game, mm. and I recently started a character who is a sniper kind of thing. And basically, I just walked her around the starting world, doing all these like leveled quests. And then by the end of it, I'm like at a pretty decent level for that place. I'm like, okay, yeah. Uh, Maybe I should actually start the main story. Yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> I've done that before. It's so, not um, a bad way of going about it. You, you mean it's like Skyrim? Like you complete the first section where you go see the dragon. It's like I can now acquire dragon souls. Ignore the main quest. I'm off to an adventure. <laughs> <laughs> actually, how I grind in um, Pokemon. Oh yeah, that sounds about yeah, right. pretty yeah. much. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, the goddess Listarte, who's the savior of super hard mode world, Gerbrand. What summons a, a hero to her aid. The hero, Seiya Ryuguin, holds the cheat rank status, but he is ridiculously cautious. For example, he buys three sets of armor, one to wear, a spare, and a spare for the spare. He's my wow. kind of guy, to be uh, honest. Um, <laughs> beyond keeping an absurd amount of items stock, he remains in his room for muscle training till he reaches the max level and fights slimes at full power just to stay on the, stay on the safe side again. I have done this in games, and there's something I, I need to, really nice and safe about I it. I need to ask a very obvious question, but he's not a German engineer, is he, with that amount of redundancy? <laughs> because German engineers stuff, they'll have tertiary redundancies and stuff to make sure nothing can possibly he fail. May be. That's the level of he dedication he's going for here. I feel like this is your top gear fandom shining through. 
maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I think ambitious so. but rubbish. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, so to be honest, um, I, I'm i like, please let this goddess be as useless as that. Yeah, I know, um, right? She seems to looks, have, she yeah. seems to be able to, she seems as emotive as Aqua mm. does. It looks like a tiny bit of a harem, and I'm actually into it. I want to watch this. It'll, uh. it'll be interesting to see how this goes because, I mean, w- f- first off, um, I have forgot the day that it's meant to air, so I'll have to double check that and get back to you. But it's made by White Fox, who've done quite a lot of interesting stuff in the past. I gotta be honest, I'm not excited for this. It's I feel like it's got its one note joke. Animes have handled their one note thing pretty well in the past, but mm, it's how long what the longevity is like for that one joke, I suppose. I feel like this one isn't gonna do it for me. It mm. might be a an interesting one, um, just from like a assessment of isekai genre and how far it has yeah. kind of gone. You reckon it's going to be a more of a commentary on that sort of thing? I do I do wonder because mm. it's an action adventure fantasy. It's going to be on Anime Lab, Funimation, Hulu, Annie Plus Asia, Muse Asia and Wackenham. Mm. So that's a lot already to be signed up for it. I would hope that he remains cautious even I'm assuming he's going to be dragged out of his comfort zone. I hope so. But I really Not hope he remains to. cautious throughout the entirety of it like he is brave, but then he always goes back to being cautious. He doesn't sort of turn into a run-of-the-mill brave adventurer mm. like if, we, we if often he does, see. I'll be really disappointed because that's basically just taking a gimmick to get people in and then just taking them on yeah. the same old generic journey. Yeah. Um, this is going to be airing on Wednesdays, I should say, oh. at 10.30 at night. Okay. Um, that, as I said, will appear on all those streaming services shortly afterwards, so keep an eye out. 23 minutes, 12 episodes from a light novel adaptation. So it's kind of, you know... We'll wait and par, see, I Part for the mix. We'll wait and see. Mm. However, the next one might is kind of the opposite side of that. It's wishing you were in a game, in a way. It's Chibio Gekihatsu Boy. Or Outburst Dreamer Boy. It's a reverse Chunibyo Harem. Oh, <laughs> a reverse harem, yes. I am so keen for this. This is going to be so hilarious right. and completely over the top. Mm. It's a very different dynamic in reverse harems. It I is, like it. it is. Now, story time. Mm. Story centers around Mizuki Hiriji, sorry, Hijiri, a high school girl who just transferred schools. She's a mysterious transfer student. Oh, no. Oh. Maybe. Guess what? Mysterious transfer student has an eye patch on. Yes. Uh, at her new school, she has a fateful encounter with boys suffering from Chinabio, adolescent delusions of grandeur. Now, that's te- the technical translation is eighth grade syndrome. And yes. We, we've mentioned this before on the program, but Chinabio is the eighth grade syndrome is essentially believing you are like the protagonist of your story and that something special is happening. That might make you mean you think you are magical abilities, that you have a destiny, that you are able to control others with your mind. It's essentially <laughs> illusions of thinking that you are something that belongs in a story. Mm. Um, and Love Chunibyo, Ch- Love Chunibyo and Other Delusions was a great example of explaining the show, through the show, what that you know effect is on those people. Yes. Um, so, the characters that she meets in this uh, room, there is Noda, who dreams of becoming a hero, the tragically handsome otaku Takashima, who only likes 2D girls, <laughs> Nakamura... He reminds me of someone... <laughs> from Genshin. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Nakamura, the supposedly reincarnated angel or devil. Hmm, yep. And the self-professed string puller, Tsukumo. Sorry, Tsukumo. Now, I like the fact that it's like, the, these characters... If you you see the if you're watching it on YouTube, you'll see the cover art up on the right, and I tell you what, like you can pick straight away which one's which. Oh, pretty much straight away. You're like, yep, no, that's that, that's that one, that's that one, and the guy with the glasses definitely thinks he's pulling the strings. See, I have to wonder one thing about the whole uh, Chinabio thing. In this, it portrays all of these people as like fairly attractive high school students, like. It looks this is an anime. Regular. Everyone's fairly attractive. Yes, yeah, so yeah. I have to. Yeah, I, TV uh, is not real unless, life. <laughs> unless it's the Toad Lady from uh, Dan Match's no, season two. No, that was two. just nasty. <laughs> and that was done that she way was on purpose. A predator. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Um, <laughs> so yes, um, I'm into this reverse harem. Sign me up. Let me give me it. Looks let, like let, it'll let be fun. Have I, a look I, at I it. do have one question on this though. It has been tagged on every website I've checked under a music genre. So is this okay. a musical? I oh god a I musical guess anime. We will find out. I'm I'm eventually. I'm immediately getting Sarah Zanmai 
that first scene where they're dancing and singing in my head, and that's what my concern is for this. So it's music comedy <laughs> school. By me See, but the opening and outro was so good. That's that's what kills it. The show is so alright. Is, is it and, that that horrible? Anyway, this is We're getting this is getting eleven episodes running for twenty three minutes. Airs on Fridays at ten thirty at night. Done by Studio Dean, who you'll probably have known from many other animes. Yeah. Um, they're currently doing. They're the studio that were in charge of Konosuba and now hmm. JC Starfire, I believe, or the other way around. I keep getting confused. Um, it's from a novel. And it's going to be on High Dive and Muse Asia. Um, hmm. I'm looking forward to see what they do with it. And the music is pretty amazing from what we've seen from the preview videos, but I'm unsure if that's why the music tab is on there. Like The, the same sort of thing as like tagging um, Cowboy Bebop with music because it's got incredibly well-composed music. Yeah, it's known for it. Exactly. Um, now, Kyle, tell us about the next one. Oh. <sighs> I'm so happy. Mm. <laughs> so I'm keen for um, this too. The preview video for this next one <laughs> had a pair of wrestlers, one dressed up wearing a dog mask like a Mexican wrestler. And carrying a Shiba Inu. And carrying a Shiba Inu doggy. To clarify, this is live action. This is this live trailer. action. So you know how like well, in, in wrestling promotions, if they've got a big match coming up, they'll do a promo meet. Yeah, they'll have like the, two the of them sitting the down, heel. chatting, yeah. you know, mm. like they do with like the boxing standoffs and then they'll go and stand and stare each other down and get all the pictures for the... Yeah, uh, yep. They're doing that for wrestling for the two, one of the characters from, well, the main character from this manga. And that's Kimono Michi Rise Up or Hitage Kimono Michi. This is the same writer as Konosuba. Yeah, that checks out. And once you hear the summary, you will immediately realise why. Professional wrestler and animal lover Shibata Genzo, ah, Shiba, uh -huh. ah, ah. dog lover, is suddenly summoned to another world. He's greeted by a princess and she requests him to get rid of the evil beasts roaming the world. Outraged that he was asked to kill monsters and animals, Genzo German suplexes the princess <laughs> and promptly leaves the castle. Unable to return to Earth, he decides to live a peaceful life and manage a monster pet shop <laughs> while wearing his wrestling mask. So <laughs> the, the, Sounds so amazing. They during this live preview video, they had the guy dressed up as Kimono. And going and I after, I think the, his his heel rival. Yeah, his, his his opponent was allergic to dogs, so refused to sit at the table because he had the Shiba Inu. Or maybe with was him. scared <laughs> of dogs. It's hard to say. Well, he starts yeah. sneezing. I yeah, he does. and this That's ends true. up resulting in um, them eventually doing it, and then they do the standoff, and then trying to beat each other up, and then you know obviously the rival gets beaten up, and then starts sneezing because the dog wanders back into the scene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they both this, sort of get themselves in various headlocks. It's this brilliant. hits everything I want. I am so excited for this. Mm, so this, is, this yeah. is written by Natsumu Akatsuki. He did Konosuba Isekai Quartet. It's going to be just as nuts. Mm. Yeah. I am so hyped. Because, yeah, it's a subversion of the genre. I love that sort of thing. And it's just, he says, like we were saying before, damn the main quest, I want to have, you know, adorable animals. I want to have a pet but, shop yeah. full of dragons. I love how you say adorable animals, but some of them definitely are not. But see, that's what I can't wait to see. No, that's a matter of perspective. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm a big fan of, as you know, um, mm. cassowaries, birds of prey. <laughs> mm. You know, especially like creatures that don't that that are dangerous but don't yeah. look cute. I think they're absolutely stunning. Danger noodles. I would love. <laughs> A pet cassowary. Okay. I know it could never you, happen. You'll, you'll so I can get behind um, this guy <laughs> wanting to save all the animals, even well, the ones that don't look cute and fluffy. I just can't wait to see how this happens. That's the thing, though. There is action scenes. You see him fighting like a uh, monstrous orcs and stuff using his own wrestling techniques. Oh, and, yeah. yes. So we're ne still going to ne Never get mind that stuff. wrestling is, you know, completely staged, but sure. Oh, not <laughs> in this world. Don't be wrong. It won't I, love, be. I, I love me some wrestling, but we wrestling know is it like, is scripted. You don't go to to Star Wars because it's real. You go to a wrestling match because you want to see the entertainment it's aspect. It's the showmanship, oh, it's the stunts, it's like the crazy characters. Mm -hmm. oh, I absolutely. love wrestling. To so be it's, it's comedy it's fantasy shonen. It's by a brand new studio called Engi, which I suspect might have been founded by our good man Natsumi Akatsuki. I'll need to double check that. <laughs> um, 
obviously originates from his manga, 23 minutes of pop, unknown length, but likely 12 episodes because that tends to be the length he's mm. going for. Actually, maybe 10, maybe 10 to 12. Oh, imagine um, if it's 24. Oh, it'd be amazing. And that's airing on Wednesdays at 10 p.m. on Anime Lab, Funimation, Hulu, and Wackenim. I have a secret hope for this anime. Yeah. That at various points, they will call in other wrestlers from the Japanese Wrestling Federation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like- my gosh. Can we please get some voice acting by Lady um, Beard. By, by, by Lady Beard. <laughs> oh, no, and from, anyone from Droplift Lolita. Oh or, my gosh. We or need to if they get got Cheeseburger or anyone from Bullet Club. From Ring of Honor, <laughs> yes. Or if we also get uh, Kota Ibushi or um, oh. what's or his, uh, Tanahashi. Yeah. yeah. Or Kata. Or Kata. Please. Just, see, just, just there's join such in this world. Here. We, we have a friend called Jason who helped us do some voiceovering for our work. And thank you very much, Jason. Um, He's not an anime fan, and I wonder if this could be the one we could use to Actually, bring him over to our side. Because he's a major wrestling fan. He's a major wrestling fan. Right, we're going to, we're going to have we, to we're try going and force to, him to watch We're going it. to do this. We're, we're tying him to, to one of our office chairs. We're putting the anime <laughs> on in front of him. We'll spin him around. <laughs> we'll just make him dinner. He'll be happy to check it out, I, I hope. Now, the, the, but I already have the rope. <laughs> <laughs> this this next one actually is one I've been reading the manga of ever mm-hmm. since I heard it got was getting adapted. Um I'm pretty excited. Surprise, it's another isekai. It is. It is called, and prepare another long name title, High School Prodigies Have It Easy Even in Another World. And my lord, do they. (laughs) Because it's, uh, essentially you've got a group of essentially genius type people. Yeah, geniuses each in their own respective fields, including journalism. Yeah, I have an issue with that. I have several (laughs) issues with that. Uh, all right, Kyle, go on off on your rant. We've been waiting. Well, Japan, I love you, but you have no idea what a journalist does. I'm sorry. We do not go and sneak around in ninja outfits. We do not have these long-range telescopes and cameras which we can use from buildings three places across. We do not then go around and then, you know, reveal something in a mass public demonstration. We just go out and do the story we're told to do by so the newsroom. So you didn't use that grappling hook watch I gave you? No. Oh. It broke as well. You got it off Wish. I, f- <laughs> I feel like that yeah. needs to be directed to um, perhaps writers rather than Japan itself. I'm sure there is... No. Japan. <laughs> okay, never mind. Because they've got TV shows, live action TV shows about, you know, hit occult journalists who will oh, go but, out somewhere I mean, and do like, something like that. Do, like do, like do, do, do we, I mean, like, you got, did you guys ever watch the new adventures of Superman, Lois and Clark? Yeah. Like, was what she did journalism? Technically, no. I, yeah. Well, she, mm-hmm. actually, she was, she was a reporter. Is there a difference? No, well, no, no, no. J- journalist, journalism, and being a reporter are essentially one and the same thing. Journalist and reporter, just different words. Okay. For it. The, the so issue there tends, you go. The like, issue tends to be that people don't get it right. think that journalists and reporters are PIs, and we're not. It's a completely different You're set of a skills. A little bit. We're not though. A, like, a, bit, a PI though. requires <laughs> training and you know a lot of you know police-based work and experience. I was going to say that we should get back on track, but no. I feel like. <laughs> I feel like we have something here. I feel like we need to make a new segment called Japan We Need to Talk. I think we do. Where we can <laughs> just air our grievances and rant at weird stuff that we've seen on anime okay. and Japanese I, I'm TV. I'm writing that down right this second. That <laughs> needs to happen. Japan, we need to talk. <laughs> but anyway, this is actually quite an interesting premise. So, the story. In Japan, there are seven superhuman high schoolers... <sighs> what? Who are world class geniuses in their various fields, ranging from governments, governance to economics and beyond. On one fateful day, these seven wind up in a plane accident and wake up only to find themselves in another world. Finding themselves <laughs> Finding themselves in a foreign place where magic and beast people are real, they immediately proceed to panic, or at least that's what would have happened if they were some run of the mill students. If anything, these seven are actually using their talents to do absolutely ludicrous things so that they can go home. Let's take it easy, because if we really let loose, I'm pretty sure we'll end up destroying the world, says one of them. Yep. Um, One of them destroys the economics of a small town and crumples a guy's monopoly within the first episode. Okay. This it's sounds interesting. kind of funny. That's a, neat, that's a neat trick. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, this looks like fun. Roll on, as far as I'm uh, concerned. I want to see where this goes. This one, it's kind of running with the whole overpowered protagonist in Isekai thing. Uh, the engineer has futuristic tech beyond even the modern level and is teamed up with a traditional trial samurai lady. Yep, fun fact, she builds a coal um, 
power station. Inst- yeah, yeah, yep, yes. Yep. Oh, and yes, uh, the Prime Minister, the main protagonist, yeah. he looks like a damn Yu-Gi-Oh villain. He does. He has like one red eye, one blue, and white hair. Yep. He's he's a Yu-Gi-Oh villain. So we've got a pr- the Prime Minister of Japan, That's the him. world's best doctor. You've got a samurai, you like the world's best swordsman, swordswoman. Um, you've got the. Is she dressed appropriately? She is actually. Oh, good. She's, she's wears proper stuff. You've then also got, um, uh, as you said, an inventor who does crazy tech stuff. You've got the ninja slash journalist, oh, the economist. Look, mm. Maybe like, if journalists were ninjas at the same time. No. We're done. That would we're just done. be. We're done. Okay. But yeah, so. T- Japan, to, you're wrong. To go back over it again, these are all high school uh, aged people. Yeah. But they're all superhumans, of and course. Essentially, it all starts out with them. They all know each other. They've been a group for a long time, um, all off doing different things in the world. And they've come back together for their annual meetup on a plane. And that's how they end up in the other world together. Mm-hmm. So That does sound cool. Yeah. I want to see where it goes. I've enjoyed the manga. The preview trailer pretty much shows you exactly what's going to happen in the first four episodes. And I mean, this is from a light novel. I haven't actually read the light novel. I've only read the manga adaptation, which with many is quite far behind. Mm-hmm. But I, I'm interested in seeing where this goes. Now, this, of course, airs on Thursday at 8 p.m. Pretty prime time time slot. Yeah. Uh, you can catch that on Crunchyroll. Oh, mm-hmm. wonderful. That, that's all at this point as well. Um, we'll uh, obviously, this will appear on other services. Like with all of them, if there's only one or a few, that does end up getting picked up by others a couple of weeks after the I first start. I feel like this one will gain popularity for its premise. So mm. we'll see it in other Absolutely. places soon. I agree. Tennis. What of it? You know, the only tennis match I've actually bothered to watch is the one where it was Pat Rafter's last match. Okay. I actually bothered to watch that. But besides that, Tennis I, not your thing? Fantastic I, segue. I did <laughs> tennis when I was younger, but I accidentally like smashed a girl in the face with my racket. Oh. And she, <laughs> it was accident, but she, sure, sure, sure. But uh-huh. she like really held it against me. So I just didn't oh. enjoy the sport after that sort of experience. Yeah, that's fair. I hope she feels bad to this day. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Hoshii no so, Sora. Hoshii no Sora stars a line. Um, is a teen adolescence story revolving around the coming of age of boys in a junior high school soft tennis club. Which is on the verge of shutting oh, down. Oh, what a surprise. surprise. Surprise! Toma Shinju asks Maki Katsuragi to join the team for his vaunted abilities and mentions a summer competition. Katsuragi asks for money in return for joining the team. Yay, I, capitalism. I, I can get behind that. It's like, what's in it for me? Pay I don't me really to play want tennis. to. I'm really good. Yeah, I promise. Like, <laughs> g- g- give me money and I'll do it. Fine. You know, everyone has a price. And obviously, Katsuragi knows his price. Well, I'm not going to lie. This is beautifully animated. Oh, yeah. Mm, this is, is very nice production quality. There's an interesting premise for the story. It's not the usual just, oh, someone who doesn't know about tennis and then joins the club and becomes really good at it. Mm. Yeah, it's, this guy's already, already really good and just doesn't want to be involved. Yeah. Um, I really am interested in seeing the music as well. The mm. music production was very well composed, very emotive. Um, mm. I think this is going to be really quite good. And it has that strong high school sports vibe, which we expect. I'm worried because this is two of them I'm interested in watching. Is that, you know, like sports now? <laughs> Mate, well, I mean, sports as they are. But anime is about anime. sports. Maybe a bit, you know. Strangely, this reminded me of an anime going a long way back. Uh, it was about uh, a, a girls club about them playing Mahjong. Oh, Saki. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. For some reason, this reminded me of that because I look at the two main characters and I think I've been ruined by Given, but... <laughs> Yeah, well, I, is there I can, a relationship forming there? I, I, I can tell you that it's not listed under a boy love tag or anything like that. Okay. Yes, but Saki wasn't listed under a girl love tag. Oh, yeah, well, I, <laughs> you were just I, wearing I the glasses. Think this was you? infamously labelled lesbians playing mahjong. Saki was <laughs> really. But some someone made a list of all the anime. This is about a decade ago. Like all the anime coming out with very short explanations, and they'd be like, you know, a small paragraph, and that's all Saki got. You, you know what? <laughs> I have a random. Thought, um, are, is there anyone who has actually written an anime about um, LGBTQI people who has been LGBTQI? 
I think it's probably rare if they have I because of the way out. it's looked at in Japan. I want to mm. find out. Um, anyway, so this mm. one, um, I love the way the characters are animated. The movements and the colours just look stupendous. Especially when they're in motion and playing the sports. Oh, mm-hmm. absolutely. So you can watch this on Anime Lab, Funimation and Wackenham. Uh The premiere is October 11th. Uh, there will be about eight, uh, 12 episodes. Will mm-hmm. run for twenty three minutes each. Studio is eight bit. Yeah, they did uh, reincarnated as a slime. Oh, cool! Yeah. They're good. But it's, they're, they're good, but if you remember the color palette for that's very different from what we saw on this. Yeah, so they're so very we'll adaptive. Yeah, interesting. be interesting to see. So it airs on Friday at one fifty eight a.m. We've got five days. Oh. Oh, it's well, okay. Well, four days, you, five you'll be, oh. you'll survive. Uh, I'm actually survive. very intrigued to watch. I'm that sure one. I'll survive without That's sport. An, this <laughs> next, w- this next one made me think of Hokago Tea Time. Yeah, so Hokago Saikoro Club, which is the after-school dice club. Um, it's not necessarily dice. It's board games. Exactly. Which yeah. are, so it's not gambling. No, no, no. It's not that. Um, so this is by Liden Films, another one by them this semester. This semester, this season. I mean, <laughs> university mindset. Um, 12 episodes, 23 minutes of pop, and it's adapted from a manga. Comedy school, shonen. I don't know why it sits in the shonen. Maybe it's like they're mm. very explosive when they're playing games. But the story is about girls playing board games after school. Kyoto in spring. Aya is a high school student who just moved to a new town. Miki is her committee president, her shy classmate, and her first friend. One day after school, Aya and Miki follow the committee president, Midori, to a specialty board game store, the Dice Club. Without thinking, they try out a German board game together. These girls who are searching for fun soon fall into the exciting world of games. And the moment they said German board game, I immediately went, is that ticket to ride? I remember that. Yeah. Oh, that game is crazy. That, that's got I've so many adaptations of it mm-hmm. now, yeah. Um, it's probably one of the most popular board games that is outside of the mainstream stuff like yeah. Monopoly or anything like that. Mm-hmm. And you literally build routes across Europe using trains. Mm-hmm. 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 That does sound cool. Mm-hmm. I feel like this anime is going to do for board games what Dagashi Kashi did for like snacks and sweets. <laughs> I don't think board games need it. Uh, They're currently going through a renaissance. Like the amount of board games on Kickstarter, the amount of new ones coming out every week. Oh, it's the insane. fact that like Dungeons and Dragons is popular again. That's yeah, I know. Scary and weird, and I love it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, whether or not this show gets the license to advertise like real world board games, yeah. that's going to be a bit of a mystery, kind of a mystery. But I strongly suspect that's going to be the way of it. Uh, I suspect because I spotted a lot of board games, and as you mentioned, like the Gashi Kashi, where the Gashi Kashi had to go and get rights for showing the candy that they were talking about. And in some cases, they had to do ones very similar to it because they couldn't get the rights in time for broadcast. I see. I wonder if this will be the same thing where they very clearly the real games but slightly modified versions of them so you go, I know what that game is. Mm -hmm. Um, Because, yeah, I know that in the trailer I saw the covers of various board games that I have seen in my local uh, place tactics Mm -hmm. a few times. So I have to wonder, oh, is this just going to like tell me a whole bunch of board games that I need to go out and get? Probably. I'm probably. happy to be <laughs> advertised to. It's very nicely animated, especially for the scenery and the use of lighting. And that's one of the key things we've noticed. If the animation is cheap, the scenery and the lighting are the first things to go. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm quite excited to see this. And it's essentially just board games, the anime. And... I'm okay with that. That's yeah. relaxing I'm, I'm to me. I'm really okay yeah. with that. Let's give it a watch. Mm-hmm. Which brings us to something which is definitely not going to be relaxing. It's going to completely be completely out of your brain nuts. Yeah, this deep. is a fun little trip. This is what I would never expect to see in Japan. But Japan just don't care. And will pl- you literally set anything from another, w- another country in Japan and make it their own story. It's, it's and it just changes it fundamentally. Honest. We are, of course, talking about Kabukicho Sherlock. Yep, now Sherlock the name Holmes like is that. now in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> thought he was in Kyoto. No, that's another one. Yes, that's, uh, Holmes, of Kyoto. Holmes of Kyoto. I love that. Yeah, it was really good. Um, this uh, is an original series, so this isn't based on a manga or novel or anything by Production IG. But it is kind of based on a story about Sherlock Holmes fighting against Jack the Ripper. It is. So, story time. Shinjuku Ward East Side. Mm-hmm. The centre of streets with the most chaos. There's a Kaba... <clears throat> There's a kabukicho with a full neon lights. When the light is stronger, the shadow is deeper. The story begins when a certain bizarre murder happens one night. Suspense, comedy, drama, 
don't know. Let the adventure begin. <laughs> yep, that, I love that that's their official synopsis. They say, we don't know what we are. And mm. it does have the comedy tag attached to and it the and the drama the, and the mystery and the, the murder. The previews were like a flurry of movement and colour. Yeah, it's like I was expecting from the title that you'd know you'd get a Holmes and a Watson, like a defined character for each of these. No, no, this is like an ensemble of weird people. Well, I mean, Watson sort of was introduced. I'm pretty mm. sure the main guy is the analogue of Watson. Um, but... I'm interested to see what they do with this. It was because like mul- th- there was multiple elephants with their trunk up. There's a bearded drag queen. There's bright colours, tall cityscapes, red angel wings. Like this it's belongs got- in space, Dandy. Oh yeah, it's it's mm. it's out of your mind nuts. But and I'm it's, at really the same interested. time, it's like it's got the space Dandy. Yeah. You know, I feel like I like it already. Space Dandy's grasp on reality. That is to say, none. Yeah. But it's also got that like darkness where there's like dead bodies with blood painted angel wings it's just like whoa that is scary that is confronting what is this about yeah it's it's pretty full on i'm i'm, I'm excited i can't mm. wait this hasn't actually aired yet this is uh, premiering october the 12th and that's on saturday at 1 55 a.m in the morning mm-hmm. so keep an eye out for it. it's going to be on anime lab funimation whack and whackin him um <laughs> whackin him whackin him whackin him yeah kabuku cho <laughs> sherlock the translation um the romanization which we're not sure if this is the name they're going to use or whether they're going to stick with the traditional name is case file number 221 kabuku cho um so if that is the case yeah i uh when i first saw it, i read it as kabuki yeah and it's just like kabuki sherlock oh dear that'll be awesome Kabu- yeah. kabuki cho <laughs> that, that, that's how we say it kabuki cho Kabuki now we, show? Oh. Chow. Oh. It's Kabuki and Chow. Huh. Oh, so it's the, yeah. Chul. Chul. Yes. Um, you're better at this than me, so there <laughs> you go. Which brings us on to the last one for this segment. Uh, ending on an utter disappointment. Uh, um, this, Kandagawa Jet Girl. The premise sounds like it could be interesting. It's, you're hearing it and like, wow, that sounds They're, like it could be a great sport. And they aren't anthropomorphic anthropomorphized jet skis. No, so this is Sports Eki, made by TNK. It's a, from a mixed media project, mm. uh, airing on Tuesdays at 11.30pm. Jet racing has become a mega popular extreme sport across the world with good reason. The jetter pilots a high velocity water ski and is paired with a shooter who blasts rival teams with a hydro gun from the back. It all adds to up to explosive, wet and wild action as they race to the finish and compete to earn supremacy. I'm not going to read cool. the I'm not going to read the rest because then it ruins it. But <laughs> essentially, this is by the guys who did uh, Senran Kagura, which is a martial arts borderline pornographic series. That's the one where they yeah. have to knock each other into the water with only their uh, no, no, their back. Funnily enough, no, it's not oh. them, but this is the same studio that made that too. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, so yeah, there's, uh, I'm not expecting much. There's, there's something to be said for the screen time in the previews that was devoted to the actual jet skis yeah. versus the screen time with the girls. There's no guys in sight. Of course not. Well, no, no, there, there is one guy in sight, but he doesn't actually have a face. Yeah, it's right. showing him in sort of like a flashback and the rest so of it is just showing the fashion insert. show of the girls' yeah. racing like, outfits. Seriously, hard pass. Look, this is not for, for kids. And to be honest, it looks like it'll be very light on actual plot, which is exactly what Senran Kagura was like as well. Um, if this is your cup of tea, by all means, go and enjoy it. Um, I will not be watching it. This, I, I would... No. Yeah, there tell is us so, if wrong. There is so much this season that I, I can't justify spending time on something like this. Like, the whole thing of it sounds so cool. You're racing on jet skis down, you know, canals, shooting at your opponent with a water gun. No, it's a laser gun and everyone is dressed like... Yeah. I, I'm yeah. not touching it. it it's going to be on Anime Lab, High Dive, Muse, Asia and Wackenham because all Wackenham, of these Wackenham, Wackenham, Wackenham. do end up on all the major streaming services for some reason. Um, it's probably because they know they'll get people to sign up for it. Yeah, It's um, got a target audience and, does. you know... All power to them. Watch it, enjoy it, do your thing. But yeah, it's it's essentially just you know, it's it's that kind of show. It's it's that ecky yeah. kind of show that we've seen over and over again, which is definitely boring, on the decline. And I don't understand yeah. why it's come back. Mm. I mean, if we are wrong and it is not uncomfortable or boring, please tell us. But it but is. <laughs> <laughs> it really looks like it's going to be. So I don't think I'm going to be touching I, I, it. I've at all. had my fill of this type of stuff, and I can tell you, I won't even be giving it a chance. Um, I know where it's heading. Um, on that note, we need to take a break. We'll be right back after this. Wi-Fi Radio. That's a lot of anime. Oh, so many. No, I didn't watch them all. 
autumn anime. Or fall anime if you're in the States. Um, mm. Autumn, fall, brown leaf season. Call leaf it what you will. fall down. <laughs> Real <laughs> fall down. So that brings us on to the second half of the new shows this season. And um, as you've heard already, we've already got a chock full season with just that first half. Mm-hmm. Half. That of was, the new shows. Yeah, it's, we're not going to be able to watch <laughs> no, all of these. God we're no. already playing catch up with last season. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So that brings us on to Mayumashita Irumakun. Welcome to Demon School Irumakun. Now, this made headlines a couple of months ago because it was in the running for a Manga Taisho Award or something similar. Oh, I can't really? remember exactly which award it was, but it, it was lined up to be pretty important. So uh, I'm, I'm quite hopeful that this will end up being good. It's got a very large following in the manga community um, and, you know, comedy, which, supernatural, fantasy, shonen. You know, I actually have to find that a little surprising. Mm-hmm. Its visual style, its premise, a lot about it is very similar to one I caught ages ago called Rosario Vampire. Yeah. Right down to its color palette. It's just, I was watching this thinking, is this a continuation? I don't know. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. I found my note. It did win the Manga Taisho Award last year. Oh, ah. okay. Or, or was it this year? I think it was this year. It was this, it was this year because Astra lost out last year and last year was Beastars. Astra won the year before. Oh, okay. okay. So, um, it's yeah. Look, th- this it looks like it could be fun. It looks like it could be fun. We'll see if it actually does anything to break mm. the mold. It's going to be twenty three episodes. It's already confirmed. Um, at twenty three minutes of pop. So it's the story. Fourteen year old Aruma Suzuki one day finds himself sold to the devil. To add to his predicament, he finds himself. How did he? Don't know. Don't care. Let's <laughs> get on with it. <laughs> this is this is anime. Like you've got to drop all these questions at the start and give them a few episodes to explain. It's true. Um, to add to his predicament, his doting owner and self-appointed grandpa is the principal at his new school, i.e., Grandpa Devil. Now Aruma must deal with a haughty student who challenges him to a duel, a girl with adjustment issues, and so many more scary beings. Can this ultimate pacifist dodge the slings and arrows that are flying his way? Um, I find this kind of interesting because it's, it's, as you said, it's done the same thing as Rosario Vampire in that all the demons are like, I smell a human. It and couldn't possibly like, be one of us. <laughs> no, we're all monsters. Here. We're all monsters here, right? Yeah, yeah, you've got like demons, you've got fox people, you've got mummies and zombies and all the kind of like colourful, interesting characters. So it looks cool. It looks cool. Mm. I, look, I, I want to see if it's as good as it's been made out to be. It's, look, I, I will give, whenever something gets a Manga Taisho Award, I will give it the benefit of the doubt. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because th- there is a reason that manga tie shows are so they're only once a year, and the, there's a reason that all the ones that win it do really well, and it's because they have strong developed stories, and they've got a lot of thought put into them, and the art style is you know unique or at least heralds back to the origin of anima. Mm-hmm. So we, we'll see what happens with it. Um, I'm definitely going to give it a shot. You can catch it on Crunchyroll and Muse Asia at the moment. That is expected to obviously go on to all the other streaming services eventually. It's just a matter of time to find out where it's going to land. But uh, I'll, I'll give it a shot. I, I've been, you know, sold to the devil. Yeah, sounds fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's find out how he got himself into it that. It happens predicament. to the best of us. <clears throat> this brings us on to something that we mentioned earlier. We've been uh, excited for this one because we saw it and we just. Didn't know what to think. Well, this was what we thought. That's a man's head. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, story. So, yeah, No Guns Life. After a war, cyborg soldiers known as the Extended were discharged. Inui Juzo is one of them, a man whose body was transformed. His head replaced with a giant gun. That's a man's head. With no memory of his previous life or who replaced his head and why... Uh, Inui now scratches out a living in the dark streets as a city, as a revolver, taking on cases <laughs> involving the extended. I think there's like, this, I love the fact this, that this this has so this, many puns. This this man. He was discharged from the military. Oh god, he discharged I, a gun. I even... He's joined the revolvers. He's this, a gun for a head. He, his his head is a gun. That is a man's head. <laughs> this is why we watch anime. It it is. Pretty much. It's the This is nuts. I love it. The animation style takes me back to Ghost in the Shell. Mm-hmm. It's like it's gritty and dark. It's 
beautiful. It's like this whole transhumanist, technological, cyberpunk craziness. And it's funny you mention that because part of the, one of the production staff did work on Ghost in the Shell. Yes. Aha, of course. They've mm. also like th- this is this is could the, be one of those big ones this season. Mm, mm. And the, the director now Yuki has actually worked on One Piece, Dragon Ball Super, Kashun, yeah. and Whoa. Doctor Slump. Just to name a few, he has an epic list of work. Yeah, it, it's crazy. So yeah, you've got some pedigree behind this. Like, it's oh, it gets better. Character designer did Black Lagoon, Gungrave, Digimon Adventure, Try. Well, um, one of the characters has an Alita look to her, which is uh, apparently in the manga it was an actual callback to Alita Battle Angel. Oh, wicked! So there you go. Um, th- this is actually based off a manga, though. It's not um, an original story, which I think is probably a good thing. Mm-hmm. He has a gun for a head. So I have to play it again. Yes. That is, is a, a man's man. head. <laughs> like, I, look, I'm super excited for this. How does he eat? <laughs> <laughs> like, how no, does he smell? You actually, how does he taste? How does he see? Uh, he smells awful. Yeah. Oh. When he sneezes, does he kill people? <laughs> <laughs> what is what happens when he gets sick and congested? Does he have to like take one of those little brushes and just like clear plug out himself his, his out? Revolver nose. Oh jeez. Is Look, that his sinus now? Th- this has some very beautiful artwork. There's incredible world building. It looks like there's a little bit of hybrid CG in there. A little bit. Um, for character design, but I- I'm excited to see where this goes because we did. We thought this was going to be super serious, right? And then at the very end of the third preview trailer, there's a scene where someone kisses him on the side of the cheek and he goes all wibbly wobbly like the characters in um, Full Metal 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 Alchemist where um, when Al gets really embarrassed and they go like the really cheap scale down animation. And I'm just like, oh, this could be good. (laughs) It looks like it's going to have a good sense of humor. I mean, you have to with a character who has a gun for a head. How does he smile? Uh, he has well, he a does mouth have a mouth, but it's all metal gun, as well. Like, um, the the thing is as well, so like... The, the Everything from the nose up is gun, and then he's got like a steel <laughs> jaw, which he smokes out of into like a noir detective oh style. On that, on that note, the music really hits that detective vibe as well, oh, doesn't totally, it? Oh, totally, yes. Like, I... Uh, this is one. This season, this is one I cannot wait to watch. Absolutely. Like, don't be wrong. There are several other ones that we've already talked about, but this one, as soon as I saw it and saw the preview trailer, I just went, "I need this." Absolutely. And this airs on Friday, one twenty-eight a.m. Uh, this will you can catch on Anime Lab, Funimation, Muse Asia, and Wackenham. Wow. This premieres on October the eleventh. So that is next Saturday. Yee! Woo! Can't wait. Oh, I'm oh, oh, oh. looking forward to this now. I will, I will say, this is an action sci-fi sign-in. It really deeply embraces the whole cyberpunk future style. So that, that majorly yes. makes me very excited. It is called Orisuki. No. <laughs> That's not what I was talking about. I was still talking about Gun for a Head. Oh, my Orisuki bad. I'm just jumping ahead. is anything ahead. but that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I shall let you finish. No, no. Continue. Or- Orisuki we can do right now. I mean, uh, I just want to say one more thing about it, and that's uh, he, ha- he has a gun for a head. That's a man's head. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Will Smith, yeah, forever. Thank for you. For that, p- that gem. Also like and subscribe. Um, <laughs> so, Orisuki means, are you the one who loves me? Uh, Th- this is the definition of fa- of harem has failed to launch. Yes, I yes. have called this the unharem. I think that's about right, actually. <laughs> the unharem. <laughs> 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 I'm, oh, like, I'm actually that's pretty brilliant. excited for this. Yeah, Kisaragi Ematsuyu is invited out alone by cool beauty upperclassman Cosmos. What, what a, a name. name. <laughs> yeah, usually that, that's a Greek male name, I think. Um, and his childhood friend also asks him out. Her name is Himawari. Expecting to hear them confess, he triumphantly goes to meet each of them in turn. But Cosmos and Himawari both instead confess to Ematsuyu that they like his friend instead. Uh, He fights this lonely battle. There's another girl who's looking at him. She's a gloomy girl with glasses and braids. Amatsuyu can't stand her because she's always turning her sharp tongue only on him and finding enjoyment in his troubles. But it turns out she's the only one who likes him and she's a stalker. (laughs) You know what? (laughs) This actually is holding on to my hopes where Masamune Kun's revenge dashed them. Yep. Ex- like, except with a much less obvious ending. Masamuni comes revenge. You got through the first season, you go, he's going to end up with a girl who he's trying to get revenge on. Yes, Boom, and done. it's like this like more 
more things could have happened. I'm like, I'm not not saying that that's a bad thing, but we wanted a bit more fun. Yeah. Than and the, the this manga, sort of, oh, okay, the so manga sort of itself like had like a run through it, and then it gets to the end, and then they had a spin off, well, a continuation manga, which very clearly shows them together as a couple and all that. And you're like, what was the point of all this? Yeah. Like, this seems so redundant. But this. Oh, these people are all weird and damaged <laughs> and broken, and I cannot wait to watch their suffering. It also has hilarious facial animations in the oh, preview yes. trailer. Um, and it has all the right ingredients for a rom-com, but how it has handled will be the big question. I mean, it could be very funny if it's done right, and I'm excited to see how it goes. My headcanon mm. is that, I don't know, uh, him and Stalker Lady are going to kind of like get revenge on the two people who sort of oh, played yeah. with his feelings. I, I, I don't think... Well, they didn't play with his feelings. He just was quiet and I timid think, didn't yeah, do perhaps. anything. But what I think is because he knows that only one of them can end up with his best mate, which means he has a chance to get the other one. So I wonder if he enlists Stalker Girl to help him ruin his friend's chances of getting a relationship oh, and, oh. and she'll ruin both of them yeah exactly <laughs> or maybe you know, in her uh, desire to earn his affection I, I mm. could almost kind of want this to have like a tragic ending where none of them end up with the guy or the girl <laughs> uh, I'm kind of hoping this is going to breathe new life into the genre just like um, yeah. Love is War did oh yes yeah but I hope so that, that's what I'm hoping for now I've got the song in my head again it's such a good song it is so this is airing on Fridays at 30 minutes past midnight so that's Friday morning, 30 minutes past midnight. Very good. Um, we don't know how many episodes it's going to run for, but likely 12. 23 minutes of pop. It's done by Studio Connect, who have done quite a lot of rom-com stuff in the past. So they're well-versed well, well versed in this territory in the animation style. This one looks great. I it's, can't wait. It's from a light mm. novel. Catch it on Anime Lab, Crunchyroll, Funimation, High Dive, Wackenim. Wackenim, 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 Wackenim. <laughs> it's never going to get old, is it? Yep. That's no. our new thing. But... um. This brings us on to one <laughs> that caused us one. a lot of confusion when we were discussing it. Um, I, I wasn't sure where we were heading with this, and I wasn't sure if this was a sequel or um, the name of something that it was taking off. It's yes. from a game. This is, of course, the game Fantasy Star Online 2, episode Oracle. So this isn't a sequel to a previous anime called Fantasy Star Online 1. No, according to my notes, it's a TV anime adaption of episode 1 to 3 of the Fantasy Star Online 2 game. So the second game in the series being adapted as a series. I feel like this is going to be something like Fate Stay Night where you've got to be in the fandom to actually get the gist of what's going on. Like, mm. I figured this was going to be sort of like um, a modern callback to all the previous games to tell you Okay, so this you want to get happened. into this game? Yeah. This is like the story for it. I could have been good with that. What it actually is, though, I'm still not entirely certain. Uh, from what I've been managed to... Because we, we were discussing this yesterday afternoon mm. when we were doing our I think we um, got a bit heated, yeah. We did, we did. Because we're sitting there going, what is this thing? I finally figured out what it is. Oh. So what it is, is they've got Fantasy Star Online number two, mm. its main story across its five individual chapters. And each what they're adapting the first three of those chapters into an animated story, so removing like what your character would do in the game and animating an original story using that. So they're using the, the, it's all original content, so there's nothing taken from the game other than the story, and they're going to animate that into a story showing you what path a hero could take in that game. Very good. Yeah. That's. I think it could be good. I and like that. Fantasy mm. Star Online 2 doesn't require you, from what I've found, to know much about the prior game. It's a self-contained thing, sort of like the Final Fantasy series. Oh, right. Gotcha, gotcha. So I think going into it would be fine, even if you haven't seen Fantasy Star Online, which is good. So we can definitely give it a shot. Mm. Um, I think it's... Is it going to be 25 episodes? Uh, yes, 25 episodes, exactly. Oh. Um, that airs on Monday, 10.30. You can catch that on Funimation, Muse Asia... Oh, that's it. Yes, uh, premieres October 7th. Okay, so that is Monday. Mm -hmm. um, the Look, I don't know much about the game franchise itself that it's based on, other than what my research told us, but it looks like a big sci-fi future series with fantasy characters inside it. The space, it's very JRPG, but it looks oh, yes, like I forgot cast to, of thousands. I forgot to run through the, uh, well, literal thousands. It's an online game. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, the, the plot's to do with... Um, isn't it do with like some species of aliens invading or something? Yeah, it's like uh, during people's qualification exam on the planet Nibirus, the players and fellow ARC trainee Aphen were attacked by a vile organism known as the Darkers, which is followed by two people discovering a mysterious girl who's lost most of her memories. 
and the truth regarding uh, their planet and this recent invasion. Mm. And we saw like a... We, we it sounds like kind of run-of-the-mill sci-fi stuff, but, you it know. It does, but, I mean, look, we'll see how it goes. I mean, mm. it could be really good. It, it's a series which has had lasting, um, you know, impact. Oh, it's I mean, been especially, around for Especially ages. considering Sega's really struggled mm. in the past 20 years. Mm. The fact that they've had a... You know, a game franchise like this, which has now been adapted into an anime and stuck around, is important for them. Big successful online game too, and those are very profitable mm-hmm. the game companies. Well, that brings us to something sort of related, but also very concerning. And Coco, I'm going to leave this to you because I have a lot to say on this, and I probably shouldn't. I try. I'm not going to okay. say much. Okay. It. it is called Rifle is Beautiful. <clears throat> Kokoro Hikari is a first-year high school girl who loves rifle shooting. She entered Shidori High School because it had a shooting club, but finds that the club had been disbanded. She had only one day to find enough members to reform the club, but luckily was able to find three other first-year girls who she had met at a competition in middle school. Thus begins the daily activities of the Chidori High Shooting Club. So, to be this clear, is the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. So, this is another club that's about to be shut down. Yep. Only it's about uh, rif- rifles, which okay, are so not legal to have in Japan so s- under a certain age. So, someone once told me to find out the reasons for things. Look at where the money is. Yeah, I can Who tell you where the money is. This? this NRA Japan. Whoa, the N- National Rifle Association. Yes. Wow. So the Japanese branch, the NRA, have actually asked the voice actors to help with their PR campaign as well, and they've got there's, yeah, yeah. The, the only there's, no, sh- there's no official videos for this either. The only except note for I really the people uh, doing the promotion stuff for the NRA. Only note I really had for this is I am uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the other issue as well is it's very unclear what this is. Is it laser rifles? This is an Olympic sport. I'm I'm really confused as to where this is meant to sit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I mean, okay, runtime it's probably gonna be 23 minutes. Probably 12 episode airs on Sunday at 11 p.m. Uh, premieres October 13th. I won't be watching this. Yeah. We'll look. We'll we'll see. I'll, I'll have a look into it and see what's going You're on gonna here. You're going to take one for the team and yeah. watch one for us. Well, like you did with uh, Do You Love Your Mother? Don't get me started. <laughs> um, look, th- this... Well, this you, did, you started and then you continued, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah I did. <laughs> I did. Um, this Against is a for, your better judgment. This is from a Four Coma manga, so I do wonder if it is going to be 23 minutes or if it'll be a short form show. Um but we'll we'll have to wait and see until uh, next weekend. So we might be able to tell you by next episode um, what the go is. Yeah. Um, moving on to... All right. I think your initial reaction to this is going to be somewhat outragey. Mm-hmm. But let me read you the synopsis and you tell me if this sounds a bit familiar. Shin Chuka Ichiban. After passing the Guangzhou uh, Special Chef Trials, Mao decided to travel around China to learn more about the unique preparation of food. Upon his return, he learns the real battle has only just begun. (coughs) Victory, Jim. The underground cooking society has already begun to move. Uh, Is this like a weird lowbrow version of Food Wars? This predates Food Wars. What? This is a manga which... Uh, mm. from memory, was in the 90s and had a long-running anime in the early 2000s set in China and its cooking competitions. Mm. Interesting. I wonder how well this will go down considering it's competing against season four of Food Wars. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. That, I mean, we're talking a completely different cuisine here. If it's, like, based in China, it's going to have its own thing going on. But except that Food Wars does actually have, in this season, because I've read the manga up until this point, a guy who specialises in Szechuan cooking. Specifically Szechuan. Specifically Szechuan. enjoy Szechuan cooking. Is this, delicious. is this like, are they I taking jabs at each other? I don't know. Um, I mean, th- well, this was already in the manga at this point. It's just conveniently lined up at this spot. Yeah, but the fact that this anime is being released during oh. that season of Food Wars. See, the thing is, is we don't know much about this. Um, the original one ran for over a year and a half non-stop, like a shonen manga. Mm. Um, it's comedy cooking shonen, which is literally the exact same categories that Food Wars fit in, except without the eki. Interesting. Um, and it's production IG. Okay. Yeah. Um, and NAS. I'm not sure who they are. But this was a Japanese manga. This isn't a Chinese manga which has been inserted. It's a Japanese sang- manga which is written... 
about events in China, much like Journey to the West, uh, its Japanese mm-hmm. adaptations and so on. Yes, yes. Um, I don't know what to think because the art style looks like they've purposely gone for that 90s art style. And I, it doesn't, I, I wasn't grabbed by this and I'm not keen yeah, on it. It doesn't grab. I will grab. I will watch it. I'm intrigued to know where it's going, but I can't help but wonder if there's something a little bit political about the timing of this. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Um, yeah. It is airing on Saturdays at 2.25 in the morning. That is in a week's time its premiere. That's on October 12th. It does not currently have any streaming services lined up for it. Hmm. So it, it is a question of whether this is aimed at a very specific demographic, i.e. the people who grew up with it. Or if it's like being released in competition with Food Wars? What? It- uh, I don't think so because Food Wars, put, put it this way, if you're bringing back a series, right, like that you've done a previous season or two on it, you already have the cast and crew. It's all you're waiting for is to line them up to do it. Mm-hmm. Um I don't think this is trying to compete with them because they would have had, like, when you think about it, you've already got your cast and crew, so you don't have to do your casting course. You don't have to line up a studio. You don't have to do any of that. It's a lot quicker to get a third or second season off the ground Perhaps. as opposed to a brand new show. I think this must have been in the works for quite a while before they even knew it was coming. You know, it, it'll, it'll, it'll be interesting to check out. We'll find out if we can check it out. So we'll, we'll see how we go with that. Um, that then brings us uh, around to the last five of this show and um, mm-hmm. there's sorry not this show this season I should mm-hmm. say of the new ones and that yeah, starts yeah we've us, got more to go here yeah that, that brings us to one which we'll, we'll use the English name because the Japanese name is far too long and this seems seeing as it's been released as this it feels like the right way to go it's Special 7 Special Crime Investigation Unit hmm. now this is an action and crime series it's another one now I, I'm noticing a trend here because there's about four of these shows this season uh, which are coming out at the same time as Psychopath Season 3, which is another crime thriller. Hmm. Um, I think maybe they're trying to ride off the success of certain ones, like, you know, if you liked this, you'll love this kind yeah. of thing. However, the background and artwork and city shots of this are incredible. Oh, yeah, it's uh, it's edgy looking. It's crazy. It's, it's an ensemble cast as well. It's not just like a, a classic one person is, you know, the boss of this group. It's everyone being a bit nuts. Yeah. So, this is set... In Tokyo, in a world different to our own that once had fantasy creatures such as elves, dragons, and monsters. Mm. The story follows Tokunyana, a unit assembled of misfits in the Metropolitan Police Department. The unit battles against a group called Nine, an organization committing crimes in their zealous worships of dragons that once roamed the world. Which sounds a bit bonkers, doesn't it? Oh, totally, yeah. So essentially, um, from what I've been able to figure out, is it's to do with, like, it, it was a fantasy world. Most of the fantasy elements are gone, and there's a group of nutters in Tokyo trying to resurrect some dragons. Like, you will not so. really see much of the fantasy aspect of it. One of the one of the characters in the Force has pointy ears. He's an elf. But the rest of it, it looks kind of like a crazy-ass cop drama. It does. And, I mean, it could be really good as long as it doesn't go down the same road after Lost did, which we saw um, a couple of seasons back. And I, I do wish that that had done a bit more with its characters. But, you know, it's really strong introduction and then just kind of pitted off. Pretty much. Which, which was a shame. Um, this is an original story as well. Um, it's going to be on Anime Lab, Funimation, Muse Asia. Um, we don't know how many episodes it's going for, but... Likely 12, I think. Seems like. 23 minute runtime. It's done by Anima and Co., which is a brand new studio again. Mm-hmm. Um, I did mention the review this season. And that's um, airing on Sunday at 9 p.m. Um, it does have a bit of a Death Note vibe to the characters' behavior yeah. and facial animations. So I'm, I'm quite little, excited for that. I don't know. It felt like a big mishmash of different kind of styles for the characters. Yeah. I'm, I, I wasn't especially grabbed by this, but mm. I'll give it a look. Um, mm. I'm more than happy to. So, And this brings us to another cop drama. Yes, Stand My Hero's Piece of Truth. The female lead is a new officer working under the Narcotics Control Department of the Ministry of Health. Its members are from all public and private sectors and include narcotics agents, detectives, informants, public figures and distinguished families. The members, chosen candidates, are set against organisations with different thoughts on justice and a mysterious drug that links to unresolved cases. So, this was a game. Oh? Yeah. Oh, what okay. kind? Mobile. Oh. Hmm. Huh. Which is why it sounds like it has no idea what it's talking about. But they also yeah. have acronyms for every organisation, 
which are poorly constructed because they clearly want the acronym to say a certain thing. Uh. So they have an acronym for the organization they're in, which is STAND, which the first word in the acronym is STAND. The studio is an acronym, MSC. Yeah, they're obsessed with it. I really so, yeah, like they really the, like their acronyms. The acronyms. STAND Neuro Something Drug Department. And it's just like, why didn't you just... Why did you bother? <laughs> like, yeah. why though? I thought the first word was good enough, so we turned the rest into an acronym for it. Why? Why? Why bother? It's a waste of time. Um, um, this another cop drama. It feels like there's quite a few trying to complete the psychopaths with season, as I mentioned. Um, it reminds me of Hero Mask, and that's not a good thing. No. Um, mm. We shall see if it does anything you're interesting. But yeah. my expectations for this one are actually really low. Yeah, yeah. I was pretty much not grabbed by this. Like, the trailer gives you very little to go off. It does. And yeah. it, th there was another one that was meant to be airing this season, which we can't find, you know, any information on. Um, the same sort of thing, where it just doesn't give you any mm. information and kind of dances around what on earth the plot is. Yeah, yeah. it's like this one at least had a trailer to, you know, yeah. work with where the well, other one didn't. But I mean, even then... I I'm mean, in this case, you could just say, you know, the story focuses on a new recruit to an anti-drug task force yeah. and specify it that way and say there is a new drug doing the rounds and while they compete with their funding or whatever, yeah, yeah. you know, but they, they've purposely danced around the issue which suggests yeah, that's not very, what it's going to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll have to wait and see. It's, got, it's 23 minutes long. Uh, There's going to be 12 episodes. Where's it airing? It is airing um, Anime Lab, Funimation and mm. Wackenham and airs on fun. Monday at 11 p.m. See, that made me wonder if that it was going to be like Netflix or something similar where it was, you know, sure an independently yeah. funded one. Um, but I guess not. Okay. Um, that brings us to Val X Love. Had a, had a few hopes for this because we we have a friend We have a friend Val, called Val who we hold awesome. very dear and she's amazing. Unfortunately, this I is don't not this as awesome to, as her. Yeah, this has nothing to do with her. This is Haram. This is Eki. This is Supernatural This show is school. creepy. It is exactly that. Yeah. So, story. High schooler Aktsuki Takuma has learned to accept his lonely lot in life as content surrounded by his studies. But then the god Odin yep. taps him to save the world alongside nine Valkyries fueled by intimacy. Oh. Takuma can say goodbye to his solitary existence. So... <laughs> So, um, what? this is definitely what? someone's own self insert fetish. So, Odin sends down nine lowly characters who get their power through intimacy. Valkyries were not. No. Well, that is so disrespectful. Oh, I don't know if you can hear it, but I'm banging my head against the microphone. Um, the main character is creepy looking, and he's got a harem of Valkyries sent by Odin. I mean, uh. come on. Like, uh, did you even try? This is Magical Girls, Cross Harem, Cross Dark Fantasy. Oh, and Monster of the Week as well. There will be no plot in this. Yeah, I only have one note for it, and I'm actually not allowed to say those words on air. You are air. not allowed to say those words <laughs> on air. I can see them from here. Um, if you would like to subject yourself to this sort of poor quality, it's by Hoods Entertainment, who have done similar content before. Mm. Look, it was um, a manga. there's a market for this. There will be fans of this, and, you know, I'm just enjoy sick of it. it but... I really am. Like, there, there's all these great shows out there and there's a possibility that someone could ruin an uh, introduction to anime by accidentally watching one of these shows when they're looking for a high quality well thought out plot story oh, don't get me wrong this looks like it's had money thrown at it it's glitzy it's shiny but oh my goodness what but, i mean like when you think about it like there is a market for this but this shouldn't be getting, this shouldn't be the stuff that's getting picked up the fact that anime lab and highlight high dive already have agreed to air this and yet we don't know what several of the big ones from this season are going to end up on. Mm. It says a lot about who they think their target demographic is. Alas. Yeah. Um, it airs on Saturdays at 11 p.m. at night. Um, Harem Eki Comedy Supernatural School runs for 23 minutes. Um, mm -hmm. I'll be missing this. I will not even give it a shot. Yeah, this is I a know hard exactly what this me. is. Yeah, it can, it can go away. Um, well, this brings us to another isekai. This one... It has some promise. It, it doesn't I think. sound like it'd be too bad, actually. Um, it's didn't I say to make my abilities average in the next life? You did say that once. Didn't yeah, you? I, I did. I thought you I did. did say that. I, I'm clearly did, did too that epic. Happen? No, no, no. Well, that's a bit. So that I've, I've, it? I've turned out as a uh, ninja slash journalist, and it's uh, <laughs> it's worked out quite well for me. A ninja <laughs> slash journalist. A ninja slash journalist who broke my pocket watch grappling hook. <laughs> yeah. And now I'm podcasting and I'm going to go and, I don't know, let's write some music and I will construct <laughs> a tower and become the Prime log, Minister though? of Japan. Can okay. you turn into a log, though? 
Log no jutsu. <laughs> so, returning to the point. <laughs> the actual he title. actually is a log now. <laughs> the actual title of this anime is Didn't I Say to Make My Abilities Average in the Next Life? Uh, you did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, no, that will always be the joke for these long names. Animals. Why would you want him to be average? So, to summarize, when the eldest daughter of the Asham household turns 10, she remembered everything from her past life. Adele was Kurahama Mitsato in her previous life, a genius student who died trying to help a little girl, leading to an encounter with God. During their meeting, she pleaded to lead an average life with average skills. After all, her somewhat capable self has been burdened with all these expectations brought upon her because of her skills. However, things don't go quite as planned, and she has to be careful of not ending up as an S-rank hero accidentally if she wishes to maintain her desire for a normal life. An average life. I'm, I'm going to stay so average that I will avoid ranking up. Yeah, I like the sound of this a lot. This is kind of like she's appeared in a magical world with the kind of the RPG statting system mm. where she can level up to accidentally become godlike and something like that. And it sounds like she's really struggling not to, but I think that will be the comedy is that she keeps getting stronger and stronger. The, the artwork for this as well is very well done. Mm -hmm. I was really mm. surprised by that, especially movement. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Um, um, well, my thoughts were... It doesn't look anything very different from other anime, but it not. does look funny. So yeah. I do want to try I mean, it and see. I, my happens. line literally says, I will give this a go. It is very cliche ingredients of Isekai, but it looks promising. Yeah, it's all yeah. the tropes we've seen before, but I think it's being handled in a kind of a different way. Mm. And maybe it'll surprise. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't think the next one is going to surprise mm. anyone. Oh, this well, is our yeah. last one on the list of yeah. the new anime that we're talking about. And oh, before we do get to that, we do need to tell you that um, didn't I say to make my abilities average in the next life will be airing on Crunchyroll and Anime Plus Asia from October seventh on Mondays at eleven thirty. I was going to say you did say that. I and did. And it's a shame that you didn't get it because it's always nice to get what you ask for, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to let it go. No one's going to let it go. This no. is going to happen this whole next three months, isn't it? Yeah. Um, the next one is Z slash X Code Reunion. I have and to wonder about titles like this. All right. It's beautiful I thought this animation. Was, I thought this was bad to begin with, and then I discovered its origin. Oh. This is another unusual origin. This is origin is a card game. I what? beg your pardon? Yep, it's a card game. It's not a digital card game. This is a physical card game like Yu-Gi-Oh! Or Pokemon. Yeah, yeah. But no, no, this is something they've got to start as a card game. It didn't. It's not like taking a franchise and turning it into a card uh, game. It was a card game to begin with. Unusual. Okay. Yeah. So it's sort of like the same principle as like Tarzos or other collectible things we had over the years. Oh, this is showing our age. Yeah. <laughs> um, genre is adventure, fantasy, game, sci-fi. Um, that's their official ones. If we're going to be honest, let's go and add magical girls, overpowered power uh, things, Eki. Um, I'm sure there's about eight or others we can add. It's by the studio Passion. They have done good things in the past, but every now and then they put out an absolute rotten stinker. They can't all be gems. And I wonder if this is going to be. The, I, I am stinker. calling this. I can't say that. <laughs> I can't say that on air. <laughs> I am going to call this the bleep of the season. Um, and we'll go with the that. The fart of the season. <laughs> That'll work. <laughs> the elderberry of the season. <laughs> Your father smelled yeah, of elderberries. Um, like, honestly, it reminds me a bit of Grand Belm, which I really didn't like. But I'm yeah. keen to give it a single, single episode look. I will do that. Well, here's the plot, and I'll see if I can convince you otherwise. Okay. The signing of a peace treaty has secured a tenuous ceasefire between mankind and the Zex, the beings Zex. who emerged from space time rifts connected with mysterious distant worlds. Take, I'll give you one guess at what the Zex look like. Humans. Yeah, what like, a surprise. Yeah, that was Different the thing. Different color skin or hair? No. Oh. Yeah, that was the thing. In the trailer, it's like okay. you've got a blonde, fair haired oh, yeah. girl, and you've got a blue haired girl. And you've got a orange head hurl over here, green hair. It's like, which one's the Zex? Yeah, which one of probably the one that looks the most human. Probably the blue head girl then. But Partnered with a Zex named Rigel, Azumi Kamigahara. Like that wow, that's a mouthful. Give us a look. Can I try and say it? Yeah, okay. go for it. Where is it? Okay, uh, Azumi Kakamigahara. Ha-ha! Well, well done. That pronunciation is on point. Must shoulder the fate of her own idyllic world. <sighs> the unlikely pair head for a newly established... A heavy cross to bear. Fujimisaki Academy. 
Yep, we've what? just added school to the mix. What? But what <laughs> destinies await them once they arrive? Oh. Guess what? All the students are going to have to fight each other oh, in pairs. Hey, okay, I've changed my mind. This is boring. Me. This is the same old recycled rubbish. No. What were they even trying to accomplish here? Uh, like, um, how many John Ross can you throw at something before it becomes this much of a mess? I mean, I, it, th- there is a point where you just kind of go, stop, please mm. stop. This doesn't get the message. I'm going to wait to see some reviews after people have started watching him. Th- this is, this is only going to appeal to a very certain group, and it's the same group that liked Grand Belm last, se- last season. Ooh. And even then, Ouch. they mightn't like it. They, they might go, this is just too... I thought this is the, poor. the animation looked really beautiful, but it, that but was all... that's the same thing with Grand Belm. Animation was what made it look beautiful. And that's well, the animation until she became, like, a lolly mech or whatever yeah. it was. The, <laughs> Chibi uh, mechs, Up until yeah. <laughs> then, it was nice. And then mm. after then, it was just like... Mm. Uh, after then, it was like, well, we might as well throw in the towel now. We have given up. So, yeah. So, there, there are three more we've got to very briefly talk about. But we can let you know that ZX will, will not be watching. It premieres on High Dive on October 8th is on Tuesdays at 11 p.m. Hopefully, it's only 12 episodes. Mm. It's running for 23 minutes. There are three others we need to talk about. Um... We can't talk about them in full length because we don't have enough details. Yeah. Fake Grand Order, Absolute Demonic Front, Babylonia. That Anime whole Lab, thing? Crunchyroll, Funimation, and Wackenim. No, those are the streaming services at the end, not the name, <laughs> but the end did end after <laughs> Babylonia. Um, <laughs> Fake it's Grand the, Order of the Cosmic Streaming Service. Yeah, pretty much. Um, it is the latest anime adaptation of the Fake Grand Order series. It's focusing on something called the Seventh Holy Grail War. Um, this show, I'll be honest, the Fate series and franchise just absolutely bamboozles the absolute nuttery out of yeah, it. I, I feel, have no idea what's going on. I feel like you need homework to get involved. Yeah. You need to either start from the beginning. We've said this before. Yeah. Um, but look, it, it seems that there's a lot of people very hyped for this. If you're a fan of the Fate franchise, you are going to love this apparently. It's You know so, what? In the comments below, convince me to become a Fate mm. fan. Convince yeah. me to start on this because it's really imposing. There's a lot to get to and yeah, we have a lot on our plate already. Hashtag convince Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Make that a thing. So, the next one is Pet. Mm. Um, this was meant to be released this October. It has not got a date. It has not any got any streaming agreements. It's not got any additional information on what on earth this is about. And it does have trailers of a goldfish flopping around. That's and then a drain. Yeah, which bothered me. This has got something to do with being mentally controlled or being able to mentally control another person and that person is then nicknamed a pet. Um, yeah. It's probably for the best that this has been delayed as it honestly mm. doesn't seem like they had any idea what they were going for with those trailers. Yeah, there are some people in the comments on Anime Lab, uh, not Anime Lab, on Anime List who are like, oh, that looks amazing. What? A goldfish in a drain? That, that looks amazing. That's, that's a, this is a real goldfish. Yeah, so you're not watching animated. it like we haven't seen slowly suffer. Anything suffer. Anything of the animation. And then you get to see it chucked back into the water and it's just like, yeah, this come is on, not... guys. As a filmmaker, I know it goes into making like little trailers like that and... That feels yeah, like that no effort was unpleasant. put into it. Yeah, first of all, no effort. It's got like a blue colour filter on a few things. But oh, it's meant to be real depressing. Yeah, that's why you use blue, isn't it? Yeah, it's, no, it's like, it's not even that. It's like, this is trying to say something, but it is not using any like... I, I'm not sure if this actually has an origin in a manga or a light novel. I, I can't remember how far I got in the research. But Who knows? Maybe this will be amazing. Maybe this will be the next Makoto Shinkai, but I ain't holding my breath. Mm. Yeah, me either. And that brings us to one we are excited to hear about, but there's no information yet, and that's Pocket Monsters, i.e. the new Pokemon. Yeah, this one, I can't help but, like... So, stare in wonderment at it. Mm. What is this? So here's the thing. The most recent Pokemon series has ended. Mm-hmm. And there is another season which continues on for it in the new Galar region, which is in the upcoming games. Mm-hmm. And that's already announced. This is separate from that. So is this a reboot? We don't know. It is unclear if it's a reboot, but we know it's a new series disconnected from the main franchise. The series won't start until November. So that we've still got 40-odd days until we get the details. Disconnected from the franchise, but we still see uh, Ash or... Uh, Satoshi, yeah. Satoshi on the cover. And I have to wonder, if it is disconnected from the main franchise, well, they, they do does that say... mean the rules are going to be different? Is he going to age naturally? My well, thought too. Who knows? They do say that the series will cover all regions from the first Kanto region to mm-hmm. the upcoming Galar region, which awesome. suggests it isn't related to the main story game. Mm-hmm. Um, it has also got two... 
main characters. It's not just Ash. There's another kid who's definitely from the Galar region because he's got one of the new Pokemon starting Pokemon. Okay. In. Um, but how this is going to work, I don't know. I'm I'm quite excited. Like, yeah, uh, I'm keen if, to give it a look. Also, it's the same sort of thing. Like, I think this might be a spin-off manga or uh, like novel story idea that they're going with. But if they did something like Pokemon Adventures, which is a manga series which focuses on the game characters, so the characters are literally named red, blue, green, yellow, gold, silver. I know their parents weren't bit, very much. No, they weren't. It, it might seem a little bit weird, um, but the stories in that are just wow, really well done. Hmm. Um, but this, we won't know anything. There's, there was meant to be an announcement this week. Mm-hmm. It's not come out. So we'll hopefully know next week. I Unusual. Hope. Yeah. Um, either way, features Pokemon from the new games launching later this year. And oh, would you look at the time. Oh, we, yes. We are no, just... two hours into this podcast Wait, and checks. we are only halfway through this anime season. Yeah. Two hours and we're halfway... So Japan is what we're, we're gonna I think There's it's too much. I think we need to stop. Hawaii Well, we've just realized that we're at the halfway point of the show. So and we're it's gonna stop. Two hours. Yeah, two hours. Oh it's my. a slug for anyone, to Look be at honest. The time. Yeah. So we're gonna fall, split. Fall needs to fall in half. We're going to split this episode in half. The second half will be out to the day after. I mean, frankly, we're having trouble listening to what we are saying. We know you're mm. having trouble listening to what we're saying. I'm having trouble listening to what I'm saying. I'm still dwelling on the guy with the gun for the head. <laughs> I think we need to have a check of that tonight and see what's happening with that show. Mm, absolutely. Um, tune in. We'll be back in... To be honest, it'll just be 48 hours for you guys, but for us, it's going to feel a lot longer because of all the work in between. (laughs) Um, There's probably be another hour and a half at this rate of um, telling you about what's coming up this season. We've got the sequels, which has got all the big ones in it. We've then also got your um, upcoming films and the usual suspects of all Mm. the shonen shows. This isn't our fault. Japan just keeps releasing crazy stuff. And this is the short list. Mm. (laughs) This isn't the full list. We significantly cut out quite a decent amount. I don't know if I can handle the full list. No, no one can handle the full list. list. Nobody Half can handle the short the full list, list is enough for it, me. If, if memory serves me right, last time we did one of these episodes, it only took us two hours to cover everything. The fact that we've gotten to the two-hour mark and we're still not even on the continuing shows is crazy. Mm. So, look, we will be back in 48 hours, your time, uh, to continue on and give you the rest of the shows. You've been listening to Kawhi Fi Radio. Don't forget, head over to our Facebook page and uh, for breaking news and anime. We'll be back in 48 hours. Thanks for tuning in. And until next time, watch watch some some anime. anime. Bye now.